welcome you to Pittsburgh for today's Big East Network Game of the Week. Today, the Pitt Panthers will try to remain unbeaten in conference play, led by one of the league's top three-point shooters, Ashton Gibbs, as they play host to the Louisville Cardinals and Edgar Sosa, who has also been red hot from behind the arc this season. Welcome to the PNC Big East Game of the Week. This afternoon, we're inside the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh as the Pitt Panthers coming in, riding a seven-game winning streak. We'll play host to the Louisville Cardinals as we inch closer to mid-January. The top of the standings should look like this. Villanova, Pittsburgh, the two remaining unbeaten. Louisville Cardinals coming in at 3-1, and one, their first loss in conference play Monday night against the Wildcats of Villanova. Hi, everybody. Along with the former Big Ten defensive player of the year, Mike Kelly. I'm Mike Gleason. And uh, Mike... This place is hopping. It's a sold-out crowd. These fans have been waiting for this ball game all week after that big win over UConn. And you look at the Pitt Panthers. They've won almost 93% of their games in this building. Louisville's never lost against this team. Why have they had so much success? Well, Louisville, the last team to beat them here, though, but Pitt was playing without LaVance Fields and Mike Cook. Now, you need good guard play if you're going to beat Louisville. They're going to need that tonight, certainly against that great pressure. Who's on your star watch today? I think you got to start with the guards, especially the outside shooters for both teams. First for Louisville, Edgar Sosa. You look at his numbers, 40% from beyond the arc, 14 points per game, and Ashton Gibbs, over 17 a game, greatly improved from last year, and 42% from three. But as you watch these guys and how they get their shots you'll find they're very similar actually Edgar Sosa here you take a look working inside out his Louisville teammates very good at finding him on the perimeter and Sosa is the type of player that is always ready to shoot when he catches the ball again inside out finding the three and this is off of a ball screen Sosa always aware of where the defense is you can't go underneath ball screens and for Pitt Ashton Gibbs, what an improvement he's made, finally getting the minutes and being productive with those minutes. Nice outside shot, able to score in transition, finish at the rim as well. But most importantly, it's that outside shot that is stretching defense and making him so effective. Well, Mike, they open the doors, and these Pitt students are headed for the zoo. Another sellout. The Panthers have won 30 straight here in this building. We'll be back to play some Big East basketball after this. Any wallet can hold your money, but only one can actually manage it, help you save it, remind you when you're getting low on it, even easily move it from one place to another. Best of all, this is one wallet you'll never lose. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. In the most uncertain times, there are some things we know for sure. There will still be weddings, still be babies, and still be bright futures. That's why New York Life has been helping families plan for the expected and unexpected for 164 years. Backed by the highest ratings for financial strength, we're safe and secure, so you can be too. Give your family the gift of a secure financial future. New York Life, the company you keep. Big East Network game is brought to you by PNC, leading the way. Champion, it's how you play. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Ride the incline, one of the great sports cities in America, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Panthers, number 20 against the Louisville Cardinals. Louisville coming in at 12 and 5, and Pittsburgh 14 and 2. Let's check the starting lineups brought to you by Interstate Batteries. First of all, for the uh, Cardinals, Edgar Sosa averaging 14 a game. In conference play, those numbers jump up to 17. Samardo Samuels, 16 points, 8 rebounds, coming off a 21-point performance against Villanova. He did not miss a shot from the floor. And for Jamie Dixon's uh, Panthers, from Pittsburgh, it'll be Gibbs, Dixon, and Wanamaker with Nessia Robinson and Gary McGee patrolling the front court. A light delay here in Pittsburgh before the tip. Uh, they're clearing off the floor. I saw all the chalk out there earlier, Mike. What was that all about? A little LeBron James type celebration <laughs> before the game. Pitt uh, got into a little huddle, threw a bunch of that talc powder up, and uh, I thought 
Yeah, for a minute, it's uh, created a little trouble. I thought at halftime they are going to bring out some pool tables. <laughs> and someone has to be the chug. Let's check out uh, Kelly's keys, first of all, for Louisville tonight. Well, uh, important for them always to knock down a three. Whenever they hit those threes, they get to set up their press, they get into it, they get lively, and then feed Sabardo Samuels. I think uh, Rick Pitino has been a little upset with the quality of the passing in their half court offense, and certainly Samuels is a guy you got to feed in the post. And Kelly skis for Pittsburgh. For Pitt, limit turnovers against the press. You know you're going to turn it over. You try to avoid those two, three, four turnovers in a row type scenarios. And then play at your own pace. We saw Pitt do a nice job against UConn of slowing that game down when they needed to. They ran at times. But more importantly, they worked that great half-court offense. Well, we mentioned Pittsburgh are riding a 30-game home winning streak, a second to Kansas. They have 51. There's the officials today at Corbett, Mike Pitts and John Gaffney wearing the striped shirts, blowing the whistles, and we are ready to go. Mike Kelly, it should be a good one. Louisville, the last time they played here, they pulled out the 75-73 victory. And Gary McGee, ready to go. Ready to go. More than ready to go, but Samuels uh, controls the opening tip. Mike, watch Samardo Samuels work in the post. And Jamie Dixon telling us he's not sure if there's a better post-up player in the country in terms of fighting for position. The Swapshar, Swapshar feeding the big man in the post. Samuels gets it stripped, it goes out of bounds. And Jamie Dixon said that should be our basketball, but it's going to stay with the Louisville Cardinals. And you saw McGee do a nice job staying behind Samuels. You can play behind as long as you push Samuels off the block. Once he gets too low, though, you got to find a way to get around. Cardinals coming in averaging about 81 points a game. Pittsburgh, they don't give up much, just 57.9. It's tough to score 60 against this club. Samuels now with five on the shot clock. Pulls it back. Look at that defense. There's three on the shot clock. Sosa. Just got it off, Mike. There's nothing inside. Louisville doing a nice job trying to find Samuels, but great job by the Pittsburgh defense. A little hop, skip, and a jump. High off the window. No, it's going to be a charge. Jermaine Dixon took the rock and certainly didn't hesitate taking it right into the teeth of that defense. Yeah, that's a nice job by the Louisville defense, though, of getting in position. You see Dixon here. It looked like he had the three-point shot. Swapshire with a lazy closeout allows him to get by, but nice job with the health defense to pick up the charge. Samuels. It's the first shot he missed in two games. That's a win for the pit defense. They want to force you to play over the top. That's what all the coaches talk about. They make you shoot over them. Always a contested shot, nothing at the rim. And they can get that type of shot out of Samuels. I think it's even a better win for the pit defense. There's McGee. Nice touch inside. Second scored by Nasir Robinson. Very unselfish club. A lot of talk right now about McGee and Dante Taylor combining to be as productive as Dwan Blair was last year. Nobody thought that was going to happen. But those two players have really stepped up. Smith. Well, that defense is really locked down on this Louisville offense now. It's 10 on the shot clock. Smith loses control. Good step up by McGee. Five on the shot clock. Smith way off the mark. Good, this Pittsburgh team. Good hustle, and the possession arrow is going to point the other way. Foul. Oh, they're going to call the foul. So Jamie Dixon now in his seventh season, a win today. He'll be off to a 5-0 start. That'll be the third time that he'll get a 5-0 start. That foul went against Jared Swapshire. Off the bounce, doesn't go. Another whistle, and this one's going against McGee. McGee. And Samuels fighting for position in the paint. And Rick Pitino in his ninth season here. He's won his last two visits. The last year in Freedom Hall knocked off number one Pittsburgh. The Panthers were undefeated. But Pitino's Cardinals prevailed 69 to 63. Cardinals 0 for 3 shooting the rock so far. Samuels using that big body. Nice little spin. What a move. Great spacing though. Samuels having a lot of room to maneuver. Only one guard on that side, the guard who had the entry pass. Other than that, Samuel's able to roam. You know, Michael mentioned uh, Louisville averaging about 81 points a game, and 
since Patino took over, that seems to be the magic number as Wanamaker takes it in. Another whistle, and this one's going against the Panthers. Another charge. Well, Rick Patino's got to be pleased. So two, Wanamaker, two charges. About two and a half minutes into this game. Charges are all about help defense. You see Samuel, Samuel slide over. Still sliding a little bit, but he got the charge call nonetheless, and has great vision by him to help come over. So Wanamaker picks up his first. I was going to say, 80 seems to be the magic mark for Rick Pitino. They were 10-0 last year, 8-2 and two this year, but 80 points in this building is going to be tough to come by. It certainly will. Pittsburgh likes to control the pace. Hard to get that many possessions. You have to be so efficient to get to 80. Knocked out of bounds. It stays with the Cardinals. Now Rick Pitino calling for Jerry Smith to post up. We've seen Reginald Delt post up as well when Samuels is away from the basket. Inside, nice feed and the flush as Delk, a backcourt guy, knocks it down. You know, Delk inbounded the ball so often you see that a guy throws the ball inbounds and he's the, the most open player left once the ball comes in play. Nice job finding him there. Yeah, Delk comes in shooting 46% from three, but he's been struggling in conference play too from outside, just three for 11. Dixon left his feet uh, trying to get the ball inside to the big freshman Dante Taylor. And it's knocked out of bounds, Louisville basketball. I'll tell you what, Mike, we have to watch next time when Louisville's on defense. We've seen Samuels and Rakeem Buckles right now playing very good help defense, and I'm watching them. They're almost disregarding the player they're defending and focusing more on help defense. Smith from three, misfires, long rebound, and it's run down by Sosa. Goes out of bounds, it'll be Louisville basketball. Depending who you're playing in the post, to go back to Louisville and the strategy, and take a look out there. Dante Taylor's in the game, who's had a nice year so far as a McDonald's All-American, but not necessarily that great scoring effort. Nasir Robinson not known as a great scorer either, so perhaps the game plan right now for Louisville is use our big men to help guard the great guard play, the great perimeter players for Pitt. That's a great point. Uh, the foul goes against uh, number 11, Dante Taylor, down low on Samuels. That's going to be his first. We talked about the three ball, Mike, on the top of the broadcast. They're 0 for 4 right now from long range. They come in averaging just under eight three pointers a game. Inside, outside. Oh, so so. Not much rotation on that shot. A little 2 3 now from Louisville. Dixon. A little bit too strong. Ripped down by Delph. Well, they're going to feed the post, no doubt about that. Yeah, that's the key as Samuels picks up his second bucket. That's been the difference so far. Pittsburgh cold from the outside. Louisville with the ability to send it inside for some points to a guy like Samuels. Now, Pittsburgh last year certainly with the great low post scoring out of Blair. Sam Young could get down there. Biggs could score as well. You lose that presence and you become a little more perimeter oriented. Right now, pitcher's not hitting those outside shots. Rick Pitino a few games ago saying that uh, Samuels had to be more aggressive for calling for the ball in the post. He's done a great job of that over the last two or three games. Taylor. Pittsburgh fans wanted the foul as he went in for the flush. No whistle. Smith, now they want to travel. There's a rejection. By Dante Taylor. Gibbs now feeding the big guys. Taylor, this time he's fouled. And it goes against Joaquin Buckles. I'll tell you, Pittsburgh more of a half court game, but it's physical and kind of a horse race. 14 36 to go. There's the numbers. Louisville by four here in Pittsburgh. better than seafood is enjoying it together and right now a complete seafood dinner for two is just $29.99 at Red Lobster you both get a fresh salad and irresistible Cheddar Bay biscuits two entrees from a menu of classic favorites and new creations and your choice of either an appetizer or a dessert to share your favorite seafood with your favorite person just $29.99 for a limited time at Red Lobster with the new Geico Glove Box app, you can get help with a flat tire. Find a nearby tow truck or gas station. Call emergency services. 
collect accident information, or just watch some fun videos. It's so easy, a caveman can do it. Unbelievable. Where's my coat? It was swayed with a friend. Download the Glovebox app free at geico.com. Jets, Chargers in the AFC Division Round. Tune to SNY for complete post-game playoff coverage from San Diego with exclusive on-field interviews and player reactions on Jets Post Game Live Sunday immediately after the game on SNY. It's a bumpy ride as Jonas Schwartz, oh, that was stupid. Joe Beningo, come on, bro, and special guests bring the back pages to life on Daily News Live, presented by City, part of the New York Sports Local, weekdays at five, only on SNY. On a road trip, I map out the cheapest gas station so I can uh, save a few bucks. We can spend it on dog food, bags of it. So we use a credit card that gives us cash back. It's always good to buy only solid colored wrapping paper. It's good for every occasion, like new snowblower. I got an off season half price it's a man machine it's aggressive at city we know everyone's talking about spending smarter and we've got lots of ways to help like credit cards with cash back because we all have to spend so let's be smart about it and that's why city never sleeps inside 15 minutes 6-2 louisville on top of number 20 pit in pittsburgh Take a look at some of the early defense, Mike. Well, Pitt does a nice job. You see the great help there by Gary McGee stepping out on the ball screen, actually knocking it away, forcing the deep three from Louisville. They're 0 of 5, Louisville is, from outside the arc, but been able to get some points inside. Take a look at our Big East leaders brought to you by PNC, leading the way, 57.9. And against the three, the opponents are only hitting 20% from long range. But you know what? So often you see these numbers there, and it's more of a, a result of pace. The teams play slower. They don't have as many possessions, and so that's why they don't give up as many points. But in the case of Pittsburgh this year, right now, they're giving up the fewest points per possession, even when adjusted for pace. So certainly this Pittsburgh team has been known for its defense is living up to its reputation. Now, Pittsburgh probably a better half court offensive team right than running with these guys but it seems like it's been a, a horse race so far early on now well, Pitt does have a great half court offense we watched that game against UConn Fran Fraschilli did a great job talking about the execution of the Pittsburgh offense and it's what it comes down to they they run their stuff and they they're so well drilled at it that they they find a way to score so Jamie Dixon spent the offseason uh, besides winning gold for the under 19 US team uh, kind of revising the entire playbook this year is Dante Taylor. McDonald's All American knocks down two from the strike. You know, Mike, you talk about the backcourt and for good reason and some of the pressure that Louisville's put on Pittsburgh over the years. But I think it's going to be a war on the glass. You look at the Pittsburgh team that uh, out rebounded UConn 26 13 in the second half. Sosa got on the baseline and it goes. What a drop by Sosa. <laughs> Go back to your point though about rebounding. I, I, you're, you're absolutely right because this Pittsburgh team lost such a special rebounder in Dewan Blair that I think he just naturally felt their rebounding numbers would dip. But instead, what we've seen is better rebounding from the guards, better than I think even Jamie Dixon expected. And certainly some of the big guys, McGee and Taylor, step, stepping up to fill that void. Wanamaker with a nice spin down the lane, his first bucket. He's coming off the 19 point performance against UConn. I like his game. He's really a tough player. He's very similar to a Jason Clark for Georgetown, who doesn't get a lot of hype, but certainly great players for their respective teams. Great spark last year's team. Huh? Wanamaker coming off that bench. Louisville now 0 for 6 from three point territory. Dante Taylor now with four. I mentioned the McDonald All American the first year since 1988. Some of the pit people telling us he almost apologizes for it because his pit team known for not having the superstars. They they don't have those McDonald's All Americans, but he is one, so he's out there doing what he can. I think with those accolades comes expectations as well. Very hard worker. Samuels takes it in the paint and. Uh, Marto Samuels looking very comfortable down on the post, Mike. That's a nice finish. He's a right-handed player. He likes to go to his left shoulder, but a soft touch, and he's improving that little baby jump hook, a very effective play. He's not the tallest post player. That's a nice play to get up over taller competition. Samuels now three for four. And good ball 
fake. It doesn't go down, but Delka will be charged with the foul down on the baseline. So Arno Samuels, uh, last week we talked about this, Mike, that he said, hey, I was the third option last year. This is new for me. It really is. You watch him post up that time, though. Didn't get it very close to the basket, as close as he normally does. So he's got to adjust. Instead of just going straight up with it, he uses a nice little jump hook. Great job taking what the defense gives you. Ashton Gibbs comes in averaging just under 18 points a game. A 21 in conference play. That's his first point. Rick Pitino goes to the bench. Rick Pitino with 10 players averaging about 11 minutes or more. Both these two teams very, very deep. Well, Louisville needed all of those players in their game against Nova. All the fouls they had in that game. <laughs> 94 free throw attempts. And Pittsburgh thought they wore UConn down. UConn had five players averaging or played 32 minutes or more. Well, Samuels had the little jump hook. I'm surprised he didn't take it after making the last one. Nice, floor. Well, there's that extra pass you're talking about. Uh, Rick Patino saying we got to be better passers. Sometimes that extra pass gets you a better look. We're gonna step aside. Gilbert Brown charged with the foul. Rick Patino squad tied up at Pittsburgh. 10-10. Check it. Get an interstate battery. Outrageously dependable. So they had an interstate. In today's markets, how can you get your retirement plans back on track? Consider Oppenheimer Funds. Whether the markets are up or down, we follow a consistent investment approach. Ask your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds and see how our numbers can help you reach your destination. Call your advisor for a prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Mutual funds are subject to market risk and volatility. Shares may lose or gain value. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Hoops action comes your way Saturday, January 23rd, as Rutgers takes on Georgetown. The Scarlet Knights will rely on their inside outside combination of Hamidi Njai and Mike Rosario to lead them to victory. But standing in their way is Hoya's big man and Big East Player of the Year candidate, Greg Monroe. It's the Big East Game of the Week as Rutgers takes on Georgetown Saturday, January 23rd at noon Eastern, 11 Central, only on the Big East Network. Back inside the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. Uh, we're deadlocked at 10 10, 11 56 to go as we check out some Big East news and notes. Mike, Villanova and Pittsburgh both undefeated. Those two teams will meet here February 21st. You look at the game going on right now Syracuse, West Virginia. Certainly a great matchup. Top 10 teams. That's the uh, second time ever two top 10 teams meet in Morgantown. And Rutgers and South Florida still looking for that first Big East victory. Hard to come by, even though both teams are better this year. And you mentioned that uh, Syracuse West Virginia score Syracuse on top 12 nine and the other night Andy Routens boy he did everything. He certainly did as a Clemson and North Carolina State game. You know the only undefeated team left in the ACC Mike. Tony Bennett's Virginia yeah. Cavaliers. Tony Bennett good man very good man. And West Virginia that game against Syracuse going to have to find the guard play. They're also going to have to find a way to defend the West Virginia not defending the way they normally do. Yeah, Tony Bennett, I'm surprised he hasn't nailed Nab Jew as an assistant coach. <laughs> He's smarter than that. <laughs> Kyle Curick uh, hits his first free throw. The last seven games, boy, he's played hard. He's not shooting the ball well, but he's averaging about six rebounds. It's good to see young players pick it up in other areas when they're not shooting the rock. He's a monster on the glass. Look at this pressure here from Louisville. 
Brown bounce pass. Taylor whistle and the foul going against Louisville. And it should go against the Kyle Keurig. It's going to be his first. Great job, Samuels. Great job attacking, though, out of that pressure. Jamie Dixon talking about not just beating the press, but scoring against it. As coaches always tell you, you got to take what they give you. And Louisville, when they pressure, certainly gives up some easy baskets once you break it. Nice job by Taylor going right to the 10. Dante Taylor, 6'9", 240. He says he really goes about 230 now. Came in weighing 250, and Tim Belts, the strength and conditioning coach, really did a nice job with him. And Jamie Dixon, pleased with his defense, said, you know, sometimes you get these big guys out of high school, and they've never really guarded anybody because they're so much bigger than everyone else. They can just block shots, but that tape Taylor doing a nice job defensively, according to Coach Dixon. And that says something because standards very high here at Pitt. Very, very high. And Dixon winning more games in his first six years than anyone in the history of college basketball. That's an amazing accomplishment. Steps outside, swap shard, still won't go from long range. Good hustle, another steal by the Cardinals. Holes thinks about it, feeding the post. They're 0 for 7 now. Samuels. Hard to stop that, Mike. Well, nice finish by Samuels. You know, a couple times, though, he's made that move to his left, and I don't think he's trusted that jump hook. He, he's got a nice little baby jump hook, and he's made a few. But actually not being as aggressive as I think he could be when he does get the ball down though. That's a great point. Uh, you get that little jump hook like uh, Onawaku at Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And once you're positioned and established down there, it's hard to block yeah. that. You see some big guys, once they get locked in and they feel comfortable with that shot, they just go back, back to it all the time. That's great. Doing a nice job of getting that ball in the middle against the zone. So Pittsburgh take down Syracuse going against the 2-3 zone. They work the middle and that short corner to perfection. Gibbs took the shot with two on the shot clock, and Robinson, garbage bucket, he's got four. And what a strong player Robinson is. Very physical down low. He's battling against Keurig. Two good rebounders going at it. Peyton Siva. Monday night against Villanova, Siva finally looked like he played with a lot of confidence, Mike. Again, feeding the post, whistle, and we're coming back the other way. Swapshar, call for the foul on the Louisville end. Well, this is Marto Samuel's doing a great job so far. Really aggressive with the basketball. Nice spin move there after going left. A lot like Luke Herring, what he does. Goes left and then spins back with the left hand, though. That's an incredible shot for a big guy down low, and again, a little baby hook shot. Keep going that if Samuels can really develop that shot, it becomes a deadly force down low. Yeah, the operative word is develop. So many of these big guys uh, say when they get to college, they, did they didn't have a left hand. Then they become unstoppable. This one's uh, knocked out of bounds. And the Cardinals. Get the basketball back. Pressure with Gibbs out of the game. Trayvon Woodall, the freshman for Pitt, trying to handle that pressure. I'll tell you, if you're going to get a look from three, it's not going to last very long. I'll tell you that much. Cardinals doing a good job moving the ball around, but uh, they couldn't get it inside the paint. And they can't find an open shot. Mike, what a different team this Louisville team looks like without Samuels on the floor to draw all that attention to call for the basketball. It's much more of a drive and kick perimeter oriented team with him up off the floor. Outside. There, they finally knocked down a three. Preston Knowles, who's really been struggling with a shot, shooting 27% from long range. As we talked about last week, Mike, he was shooting 50% from long range before he sprained his wrist. Still getting healthy. Certainly that's had an effect on his game. We saw him have a great second half, though, against St. John's. They opened actually, up the second half and scored at will. I was going to say, actually got the start in the second half, whereas Patino prefers him as the sixth man. Dixon with eight. There's a reach, and it's going to go against Peyton Siva. Well, you got to be so strong with the basketball. Going against this Cardinal team, they always reach in and come from behind. We saw Nova didn't do a good job in that big Monday game of taking care of the basketball in the first half, 17 turnovers. But in the second half, once they started to really control the ball, to not just put it on the floor as soon as they caught it, that's how they made their comeback. Wanamaker. Oh, look at that extra pass. McGee misses it. Siva 
Kicks out to the open man. Bring it up. It's back to back threes now for Knowles. He's got six in the ball game. What a great look by Siva though. In rhythm right to Knowles. You mentioned him struggling with his shot a bit. Although every time we see him he seems to light up the scoreboard. <laughs> Go back to the rebound here. Great passing down low, but just a point blank miss and no footer. Unable to connect is McGee and Siva here drawing the defense away. He knew Knowles was be behind him the entire time. He just draws the defense away and look like Robinson a little late to pick up Knowles. Inside the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 20 Pitt taking on the Louisville Cardinals along with former Wisconsin star, the who has the third most fields in Big Ten history, Mike Kelly. I'm Mike Gleason. Great to have you with us on the Big East Network. What's at stake? Well, Louisville seeking win number 1600 and Pittsburgh looking to remain unbeaten in Big East play and extend that home winning streak to 31. They come in riding a seven game winning streak of this year. Now keep in mind Louisville is the only team in the Big East to win twice inside this building. Knocked out of bounds and it's going to be Pittsburgh basketball. Well, how many times did we see this though against Nova in that first half. Terrence Jennings did a great job knocking the ball away. Gibbs back in the game for Pitt. Panthers shooting. 40% so far. Little runner by Robinson. That's the play. Once you get it inside right there, it essentially is a two on one against the backside of that 2 3 zone. Robinson and McGee, and it's up to Robinson to make the right call whether he needs to dish or finish. Nice job making the shot. We were saying uh, previously how tough he is. His nickname is the Warrior. That's a good reason for that. Well deserved. I guess everybody out of Chester, Pennsylvania is tough. I like your buddy Bo Ryan. I say Bo Ryan will tell you the same thing. <laughs> Jennings, yep. got a little drop step on the baseline. There's the hook, and it's going against Jennings. Inside eight minutes. Preston Knowles now starting to heat up from outside and sparking this Louisville Cardinals to a 19-15 lead. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved. are now on sale. Call 800-469-JETS or visit NewJetStadium.com. Yeah, I guess there's stars and then there's superstars. Um, I'm bringing value to the team. I think that's what's most, hey, what's the most. Yeah. You bring my um, dumps? Yeah. Got you right here, baby. Uh, are you bringing value? That's what I'm bringing to the team. McDonald's is bringing more value to the tri-state area, where the beefy, cheesy McDouble is now part of the dollar menu every day. We get really hungry around here, and when that happens, I go get the food. Didn't get the 3G coverage you wanted this season? There's a map for that. To get almost five times more 3G coverage than AT&T, hurry into the Verizon Wireless Go Red Save Green event, where you can get 50% off select 3G phones like the Moto Rival, LG 8360, or the Samsung Omnia for just $24.99. Verizon Wireless. Attention sports fans, get ready to roar with your Hofstra pride. This season's Hofstra Men's Basketball season tickets are on sale now and start at just $99. To order your tickets, call 516-HOFTIX. That's 516-H-O-F-T-I-X-X or online at at the all-new GoHopster.com. Use promo code ESPN1050 when ordering and receive a special gift courtesy of Hopster Athletics. It's time for you to join your Hopster pride. It's time for you to roar with us. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. Our score 19-15, a Louisville on top. We'd like to say hello and thanks to our fans watching in 24 states on our Big East Network Game of the Week, along with our viewers watching nationwide on ESPN Full Court and ESPN360.com. Along with Mike Kelly, Mike Leeson here, and uh, you've become very popular on uh, Twitter right now. And <laughs> what about uh, some of the tweets this year, or this week? I uh, went with three-point shooting. You know, I couldn't shoot a three myself when I played, so I had to talk about it on my Twitter feed, but great three-point shooters in this league, no doubt. A couple of them in this game, Edgar Sosa and Ashton Gibbs. 
Well, Scotty Reynolds, uh, what a player he is. Certainly taking over this year, doing a nice job for Nova. Andy Routon's a dead-eye shooter, and Hazel is unconscious at times from outside the arc. We'll talk more about this uh, three-point shooting prowess in the Big East coming up at halftime. Now, you want to talk about the Big East Network game of the week or all things Big East basketball. Follow the Big East Network on Twitter. Send a comment to Mike Kelly at www.twitter.com slash Big East Network. All right, Michael, what about the pit offense now? We saw Preston Knowles loosen up and knock down a couple of threes for Louisville. What does Pittsburgh have to do to get a little bit more fluid? Well, I like what they've done the last few possessions against that 2-3 zone. Working inside, Robinson, a nice player for him. At the four spot, able to get the ball, turn, and create. And then we're going to see Wanamaker go to the line after a foul. The foul went against uh, Raheem Buckles. That's uh, two on the 6'8 freshman from Miami. Wanamaker, a 70% shooter from the strike. Sometimes more than anything playing against Louisville, it's about taking care of the basketball, just possessing it, being confident, being boss with the ball, as my old coach used to tell me. you got to be boss with the ball, take care of it, not give it away, and you'll get some good looks. Is that kind of a mental thing as well as a physical thing, just be boss with the ball? Absolutely. Drilled into you all week in practice whenever you play a team like Louisville. Any team that's going to press you, going to be real active, Cardinals by two on the road. Over the last three years, these Cardinals have won 13 of their last 17 against top 25 competition. Panthers now with a chance to tie. I don't believe in freshman mistakes. I think there's just mistakes that it, everyone can make and certainly get better as you go along. But Peyton Seaver there just tried to thread a pass. There's no chance of getting through. Wanamaker gives it up. McGee wants the foul. Most of this house wanted a call. They need McGee to knock those down. He's missed a couple of bunnies inside. And the reaching foul goes against Pittsburgh. Nixon picks up his second. May Nixon, the senior last year at Freedom Hall. One of the few players that shot the ball well. He had 19 points in that game. Sam Young had 14, but was just 6 of 20. Vance Fields, 3 of 14. Wow, Knowles. He just turned and spun, and he's feeling it now. I tell you what, you know, he plays at a very frantic pace. It really works well in their defensive set. Very active player, always moving his hands around. In fact, his injury to his hand, coach is thinking perhaps affecting his defense a bit, not as quick to stick his hand there, try to knock the ball away because of the injury, but certainly offensively showing no signs of being hurt. Wanamaker takes it right into the teeth, gets his rebound and sticks it back in. You were saying how much you liked this game last year coming off the bench. He got 20 minutes. I remember him coming off and sparking the Panthers off the bench, but I didn't realize he played 20 minutes a game last yeah, year. Yeah, tough player, really tough player. You can, you can plug him in at a few different positions, be a big guard or a small forward. Samuels rejected by McGee. McGee starts the break. Robinson will finish the break. Of all the things I thought we might say today, McGee starts the break. That was not one of them. Nice job, though, with the block and getting out in transition. You know, Gary McGee, the 6'10 junior, as we take another look at this, Mike, take us through it. Well, Samuels, he tried to go to the left, and McGee did a nice job of bodying him up. Didn't let him go to the basket, so as he faded away, it was an easy block. And then out in transition, able to push the floor. This Pittsburgh team, known as a half-court style of team, both offensively and defensively, but they will look to get out in transition and certainly let their defense create offense. Well, today's Big East coach's spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. So let's take a closer look at Coach Jamie Dixon of the Pitt Panthers. In his seventh season, again, I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's amazing. The first six years, he's won more games than anyone in the history of college basketball. Maybe the best coach to not go to a Final Four. I put Bo Ryan from Wisconsin in there. And Mark Few from Gonzaga in that list as well. A couple of 31-5 and five seasons. Uh, one last year. Won his first year as a rookie coach. And they got the school's first number one seed. First number one ranking last year. You know, I started to talk about Gary McGee with a 6'10 junior. 
who started that break. Everybody thought Dante Taylor would come in, being the McDonald's All-American, and take over that position, but McGee's done a great job of stepping up and kind of holding Taylor off, even though they're sharing time. They've complemented each other. They've actually worked together to be as productive as a guy like Dewan Blair was. Boy, Knowles is playing with a lot of confidence now, huh? The ball won't go down, and here comes Pitt. Tied at 21. Chance to take the lead. Gibbs is getting been quiet. I'm watching him. He's going to get active in this offense pretty soon. Hard to keep him down. Just against the zone. It's 2 3 from Louisville right now. Threw it away. Pittsburgh comes in averaging less than 14 turnovers. Good luck. There's that extra pass. That's got to be a foul. Swapshire. And they're going to call against Pittsburgh. Robinson. I'm not so sure how this wasn't a foul down low. Nice pass from Knowles inside. Especially as hot as he'd been. I thought he put it up. A violent swing there by Robinson. Maybe it was all ball, but tough to have that much action at a shooter and a foul not be called. That's a foul. Swapshire now with his first point of the afternoon. Other games today, there's the big one in Morgantown, Syracuse, West Virginia. The Q's up by four now in the first half. And the Clemson really uh, stuck it to North Carolina. Recently. They did. It's a good Clemson team. On top of NC State. Swapshire, an 84% shooter from the stripe, knocks down both. Knowles goes out. Sosa back in the game for Louisville. We'll watch to see him in the offense. As Pitt throws it away. And that's uh, a rarity this year with uh, Pittsburgh as far as uh, throwing the rock away. Seven turnovers now here in the first half. Now you talked about the 94 free throws in that Monday game with Villanova. But if you're going to shoot that many free throws, I mean, that's combined, of course. But Louisville hit 87%. Now it makes a difference. It's such a great first half. Once Nova settled down, though, the guard play was just too strong. Wow. Kiss off the window. How about that? Aren't you supposed to call that, Mike? Yeah, you almost credit the defense there. McGee, I thought, did a pretty good job of forcing Samuels in the shot that Jamie Dixon would probably take all day going away from the basket. A tough look. Well, that's going to go against number 12, Reggie Delp. A little over anxious on the, uh, the press. You got to play the percentages. Anybody that goes up against Amardo Samuels knows you have to push him away from the basket. Pretty good job there by McGee. Hard to fault him. Staying behind, forcing him away. Just a better shot. Samuels hitting 12 of his last 21 shots coming into the game. He's the first in double figures with 10 as Wanamaker. Back on the line with six points so far this afternoon. Pittsburgh. Eight of nine from the stripe. Talk about good free throw shooting too. Uh, the Panthers against the UConn on Monday night shot 85%. So this one rattles him, but he hits them both. Pittsburgh nine of ten as Dante Taylor checks back in. You mentioned Dewan Blair earlier and uh, what he gave this team last year, Mike. Uh, 15 and a half points, 12 rebounds. You talked about McGee and Taylor combined. 12 and a half points, 12 rebounds, so pretty much the same numbers almost. Yeah, two for one. That's about it. Tells you how good Dewan Blair was, though. <laughs> two, two post players playing great so far for Pitt. Just able to match the production of one guy from last year. And Blair maybe a little more flamboyant with ripping down the rebounds the way he did. Yeah. Intimidating. Good defense. Gilbert Brown comes up with the rock. There's Gibbs. You called it. He hits it. Quick release. You watch Gibbs play offense. You know that shot, it's, it's kind of a set shot that he gets off, but because it's so quick, great ball fake there, he can get it off against faster and bigger competition. I thought it was interesting, uh, Jim Beheim. We talked about with Lance Fields a couple of minutes ago. Beheim said Fields was good, very good, but he'd rather face Fields than Gibbs because of uh, Gibbs' shooting prowess from outside. I thought that was a pretty strong call. Yeah, I don't know about that. Fields a pretty good player. Two different types of players. More of a shooter is Gibbs, and you watch him here. Great pump fake. Nice job getting the defense off kilter as Louisville is tied up with Pitt. Hey, Judith, I'm going to need you to work on Monday. I can't. It's Mungo Day. Mungo Day? 
It was long ago at the Battle of Glen Kitchen. There was a bloody fight. Robes were ripped to shreds. Lord Mungo's clan emerged victorious in their tattered garb. It was the dawn of men's fashion and the accidental birth of the runway. And how do you celebrate? By going to Las Vegas. Shopping is a big part of the tradition. Could switching to GEICO really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Does Charlie Daniels play a mean fiddle? So you do it, son. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The only thing better than seafood is enjoying it together. And right now, a complete seafood dinner for two is just $29.99 at Red Lobster. You both get a fresh salad and irresistible Cheddar Bay biscuits. Two entrees from a menu of classic favorites and new creations. And your choice of either an appetizer or a dessert to share. Your favorite seafood with your favorite person. Just $29.99 for a limited time at Red Lobster. So, honey, you know that guy at the bank we met with? I like that idea you had about running a marathon. I'm saving for retirement. I got plans. I'm thinking of biking to work. The amount of money I save on gas, I've been able to take hotel shampoo bottles when I travel. I haven't paid for that stuff in years. At City, we know everyone's talking about saving. And we've got lots of ways to help with smart ideas like auto save. Because when you save a little today, it makes you feel good about tomorrow. That's why City never sleeps. Pittsburgh with three sweet 16s and a Scotty Reynolds shot from a Final Four trip. And what a shot this was. Scotty Reynolds, how often you see him hit the big shot in big games, especially at the end. Tough way to finish the season, isn't it? For I was just, just going to say, it took the words right out of my mouth. How devastating. 78-76 in Pittsburgh. That close to a trip to the Final Four. And uh, look what they lost. Young Blair, Fields, Biggs. You know, so much has been made of this pit team that was picked to finish ninth in the league, and that's because everybody looked at that. They saw everything they were going to sure. miss coming into this season. But Jamie Dixon said he knew how good the guys were playing behind them. He said, if I had guys playing against, playing behind not very good players, then I'd be concerned. But he had good players playing behind good players, and he plug and play this year. Young and Blair in the NBA, Fields over in Russia, Biggs in Greece. A lot of shoes to fill, but uh, they've done it so far. Sosa. Kind of a, uh, I don't want to say out of control, but uh, had his mind made up he was going to launch that one quick, wasn't it? Sure looked like it. He hasn't found his offensive rhythm just yet in this game. He's one for four so far. Of course, half court right now looks more like Louisville's focused on getting the ball inside the Samuels. 2 3 zone. Brown inside. Knocked away. Another steal by the Cardinals. Buckles. Boy, wow, that's a tough strike. Yeah, that's a that's a tough spot for Buckles to get the ball. Smith gave it up to him in a position to have to create a play, and Buckles showing he can do it with the left hand, no less. Look very comfortable. Buckles. As Pitt works against his half-court offense, I think Robinson is a little more comfortable now. He and Taylor will work in tandem. One guy will go middle, one will go short corner. But I think Robinson's a little more comfortable catching that ball right there, turning to make a play. Robinson kick out to Brown down the baseline and he throws it away. And it's going to be Louisville basketball. It's going to be the ninth turnover, I believe. Ninth turnover now. Coming up on the Big East halftime report to the Big East Wire. Mike will take a look at the Big East top three point shooters. We'll glance at the Big East news and notes and we'll preview that Rutgers Georgetown game on the Big East Network next Saturday from the nation's capital. That's there. Mike Mara streaking back door and good thought poor execution fifth turnover down for Louisville Well, they had it we could watch it it was kind of a slow developing play Mara an extremely athletic player for this Louisville team was wide open that pass just a little too quick and Mara unable to go get it Brown goes out and Trayvon Woodall the 5'11 redshirt freshman from Brooklyn checking in Skips with the basketball 
Woodall with the 71 assists uh, coming in, even though he comes off the bench, Mike. Uh, Woodall leading this team in assists. Good spacing against that press last time for Pitt. Doing a nice job at Gibbs. Quoted in the paper this morning saying it's kind of a run and jump press. Got to have good spacing. Can't bring too many players close together. It plays into their hand. There's a reach, and Mara is charged with the foul. When you, you talk about Gibbs, Mike, I mean, he's running the points. Is he running the show or is he setting things up and then he kind of floats over and becomes a, a two guard? But he's a very smooth player. I, I think there are times when he gets the ball in his hands and he knows he wants to score or wants to create perhaps with a ball screen. But there are other times where he does bring the ball up, pass it off, and then kind of work behind the defense, especially against the zone at times. He can roam that baseline and kind of play behind him. And, Trying to have a little bit of a sneak attack. Wanamaker, the uh, junior with nine, uh, coming off the 19-point performance against UConn. And all of his buddies out there watching, I apologize. I just jinxed them from hitting double figures. <laughs> 90 seconds remaining in the first 20 minutes. Mara stops. Fires that it's a three. He's a shooter. Great outside shooter. Merritt doing a nice job floating without the basketball, allowing the kick out for three. Time Pitt brought the double team twice in that possession. Samuels got the ball, kicked it out once, and then a second time for the three. You know, Merritt, you talk about he's a shooter. He's been struggling with a shot, but one thing I like about him is uh, for a freshman, here he is a rookie, and he's not afraid to keep shooting. No, you can't be. Especially if you're known as a shooter. Those guys want to shoot their way out of a slump. A lot like Jerry Smith's got to get his way out of a slump, too. Sosa off the turnover. And they missed an opportunity. Samuels missed the follow. And here's the whistle. And it's going to go against. Looks like it's going to go against the, the Louisville Cardinals. Buckles picks up his third. Let's go inside the play, Mike. Well, Samuels getting so much attention inside. You see there with the first kick out. He's going to readjust his post position, get it again, and Mayer, a great job of just floating to the corner, seeing the opening, realizing he had to take his defense away. And here's another look. As the ball comes out, Samuels with the repost, gets some spacing, and Mayer works. Robinson, who was guarding Mayer, was actually the player that went down for the double team. Great recognition. Now you talk about Mara again. Uh, he's only a freshman by the time he's a junior or senior because he's not afraid to shoot. And Rick Pitino said he's the probably the best pure shooter he's ever recruited. I could see this guy really lighting it up in that, years to come. That's saying something. That's high praise. <laughs> Trayvon Woodall looking for his first point. He has one rebound and one assist. The from a high school teammate of Mike Rosario. Speaking of Rutgers, we'll have Rutgers next Saturday against Georgetown. <laughs> Woodall, a member of that Bob Hurley St. Anthony team that went 32 and 0. Six players signing uh, Division One scholarships to play after that 32 and 0 season. So I'm not sure who Bobby Hurley didn't coach in high school. <laughs> Every game I do, I think he coached somebody. Well, a lot of the good ones. And Rosario had really been struggling with his shot. Struggled in the first half against Syracuse. So snapped out of his slump in the second half on Wednesday night. And to post, see if the double team comes. See, Mara's always thinking about that shot, huh? Inside, outside, back inside, and Samuels misses the shot. A little off balance. Rick Pitino was hollering to uh, Samardo. For some advice next time he touches in the post. Here we go, final shot. Doesn't go, and the stick back, not quite in time, but it doesn't go anyway by Wanamaker. We played 20 minutes, and as expected, we've got a close one. Let's update the Star Watch now. Yeah, not a lot of points from both of these players. Other people stepping up for each team. Smarto Samuels doing a nice job. Good first half overall for Louisville. They go into halftime with a three-point lead and did their game in the first half. Well, the Pitt Panthers uh, looking for their 31st consecutive win at home. And right now, at halftime, they trail by three. The Big East Network Halftime Report is coming up. Need a better battery? Get a 
interstate battery. Outrageously dependable. So they had an interstate. Would you trust me? You want me to take your word for it. This guy I met online, he could be anyone. How can I know who to trust? Background checks are no longer just for corporations. Thanks to binverified.com, you can run instant background checks on anyone, even yourself, right from your home computer. Dating online can be scary, but with Bin Verified, I know exactly who I'm meeting before the first date. My accountant, my mortgage broker, and even my electrician. Now I know I can trust them. No stranger comes around my growing family without a background check. With Bin Verified, you can search anyone's background. What turns up just might surprise you. Find out before it's too late. With Bin Verified, you can trust me. I make sure I know before I date. Bin Verified protects me and my family. Isn't it better to know for sure? BinVerified.com. It's easy to keep you and your family safe. Visit BenVerified.com slash TV36 now for a free trial of unlimited background checks. This is the information retailers don't want you to know, especially now. They don't want you to learn just how much money you've been giving away to retail markups on items you purchase for your home. All because you don't know how to buy like the insiders do at Direct Buy Club, the home improvement and furnishings club with direct insider prices. The best thing about Direct Buy is you're getting the best price that you can, and it's very easy to go shopping at Direct Buy. I've purchased coffee pot, toaster, blender, food processor, all of those things. The savings is significant. It truly is. And now, for the first time ever, Direct Buy is offering you a certificate for a free 30-day membership. Members buy top quality name brand merchandise from hundreds and hundreds of trusted manufacturers. So call the number on your screen now and we'll rush you your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy Club and your certificate for a free 30-day membership. This is a limited offer, so call now. No dealers, please. Welcome to the Big East Halftime Report. Back inside the Peterson Event Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Panthers and the Louisville Cardinals are at the break. It's time now for this week's Big East Wire as uh, Mike Kelly takes a closer look at some of the top three-point shooters in the Big East Conference. I don't think there's a better place to start than with Jeremy Hazell, the guy who is single-handedly trying to take on Luke Herringoni of Notre Dame for the scoring title in the Big East. You watch Hazell play. He's a fearless shooter. He takes lots of different shots from all over the floor. As a defender, you have to be very aware when he gets the ball. He's averaging 23 points a game for Seton Hall. And Ashton Gibbs, he's playing right here for Pitt. Certainly a great leader of this team. Maybe the candidate for comeback player of the year. You consider only four points a game last year. About 17 points per game this year. Deadly shooter from outside for Pitt. Andy Routens from Syracuse. Great three-point threat. His teammates very good at collapsing the defense and kicking out to Rounds, who knows his role. His role is as a three-point shooter. He's got 41 of them on the year. And when he gets the ball and his feet are set, even in transition, as you see there, he can knock them down. And for Louisville, Edgar Sosa, another one of my top five three-point shooters, gets him up in transition for this Louisville team that likes to press and play at a fast pace. Sosa with 39 threes on the year certainly is capable of knocking him down from outside the arc. His teammates find him whenever he's available and I don't think there's a better three-point shooter than Scotty Reynolds a guy who is fearless when he gets the ball very good at moving without the ball and his teammates will find him he averages 19 points a game and is leading the Villanova team right now a team that looks destined for the final four Tim Abramidis of Notre Dame has 46 and I'm going to ask you in the second half what other guys might sneak on that list before it's all over Big East Network halftime report will continue from Pittsburgh after this Want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. 
Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Get your career cooking. Literally. With Le Cordon Blue Training. You could train as a culinary professional and work at restaurants, resorts, bakeries, catering companies, and more. Call now for a career guide. Free! Call the Le Cordon Blue School. Call 800-718-1824. That's 800-718-1824. Call now. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I've started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Welcome back to the Big East Network Halftime Report. In Pittsburgh, the Panthers and the Cardinals are at the break, along with the former Wisconsin star Mike Kelly. I'm Mike Gleason. Let's take a look at some news and notes around the Big East Conference. And then there were two, Villanova Pittsburgh, undefeated. Mike, a lot of great individuals in this conference. Right now, though, Villanova and Pitt, the best teams in the conference. How about uh, number five against number nine in Morgantown? Good matchup there. Going to come down to guard play. You've got to hit shots against that Syracuse defense. West Virginia hasn't had that consistent guard play. They'll need it today. Boy, Syracuse, 85 points a game. That's number one in the Big East, 53 percent shooting number one 21 assists a game that game going on right now on ESPN you know Rutgers USF Seton Hall St. John's all better this year Mike but getting that first win in the Big East is not easy Rutgers and USF still looking for number one the USF been banged up a little bit missing Gus Gilchrist for part of the season certainly that's hurt their chances well the Panthers and the Cardinals are at the break and our Big East Network halftime report will continue the zoo ready for that second half here in Pittsburgh that's coming up Just a few quick clicks and you found the directions you needed. Or that recipe you wanted. And now, just one click gets you everything you need to advance your career and increase your salary. Earn My Degree features hundreds of online degrees in business administration, education, nursing, and more. Online degrees are fast, flexible, and convenient. Perfect for busy professionals like you. You can browse by subject, degree, or school, and Earn My Degree will help find the perfect online program for you. And with 24-7 online convenience, you can earn your degree whenever, wherever you like, in as little as 10 months. Earn My Degree even includes valuable career, education, and financial information. It's everything you need to move ahead online. We've done all the legwork for you, so all you have to do is click. Visit Earn My Degree today. Go to the web address on your screen right now. Are you stuck in an adjustable rate mortgage, approaching foreclosure, bankruptcy, or are you just unable to make your current mortgage payments? You can now lower your monthly payment without refinancing, without closing costs or appraisal fees. A rate modification alert has been established to help all homeowners change the terms of their current home loan. Imagine saving hundreds of dollars monthly without incurring any closing costs. 
Call the toll-free number at the bottom of your screen to speak to a mortgage modification specialist. We are experts at working with you and your bank to lower your monthly mortgage payment. We've helped thousands of homeowners make their mortgages affordable again. Whether you're late on your mortgage, facing a rate adjustment, or even if you're current with your payments, we can help get your mortgage payments lowered. Take advantage of the current state of the economy and allow us to contact your lender on your behalf. Call the number on your screen for more information. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. This is Rob. They call him the rabbit's foot. Rob doesn't play blackjack, and Rob doesn't shoot craps. In fact, Rob doesn't even know how to play roulette. But Rob does know how to do one thing. He knows how to bring the positive vibes. And that's why this trip, next trip, and every trip, the rabbit's foot will always be invited back. At Harris Resort Atlantic City, everyone plays a part. Party the night away and pamper yourself the next day. Book now at harrisresort.com. Welcome back to the Big East Network Halftime Report. Here in Pittsburgh, the Panthers and the Cardinals of Louisville have played 20 minutes, and there's the numbers after the first 20. More exciting Big East hoops action coming your way next Saturday, January 23rd. Mike Rosario and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers heading for the nation's capital to take on Georgetown and their Big East Player of the Year candidate, Greg Monroe. It's Rutgers and Georgetown next Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on the Big East Network Game of the Week. That's next Saturday. Right now, let's get back to present day. The Big East, Villanova, Pittsburgh, both undefeated. Last year, Mike, Louisville goes 16 and 2. I'm not going to ask you who's going to win the Big East this year, but how many losses will the champion have? Well, I'll say this I didn't think anybody would go through last season with only two conference losses. So hard to tell. I would think three losses would get you at least a share of the title. All right, we flip the page and look at the back side of the standings. Look at UConn, two and three. That's a little surprising at this juncture. Yeah, surprising to see them. Their schedule has a big part to play in that. Marquette, though, at one and three, I think one of the better teams in the league despite their record. Now uh, the Bulls, Scarlet Knights, and the Blue Demons all looking for that first victory. Big East Network Halftime Report will continue. We're just moments away from the second half here from Pittsburgh after this. In today's markets, how can you get your retirement plans back on track? Consider Oppenheimer Funds. Whether the markets are up or down, we follow a consistent investment approach. Ask your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds and see how our numbers can help you reach your destination. Call your advisor for a prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Mutual funds are subject to market risk and volatility. Shares may lose or gain value. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Get your career cooking, literally, with Le Cordon Bleu training. You can train as a culinary professional and work at restaurants, resorts, bakeries, catering companies, and more. Call now for a career guide, free. Call the Le Cordon Bleu School. Call 800-718-1824. That's 800-718-1824. Call now. And he's uh, just, there's one thing to say about him, man. He's just a heck of a shooter. You know, there's no question that he's the, he's the heart and soul of that team. You know, he, he can light it up at any given time. I respect him a great deal. And once he gets that, that kind of confidence going, and he sees the ball going through a few times, you know the other team's going to have a long night. Playing against these stars night in and night out, uh, it's great to, have, to form the relationship that you do on the court. You know, that's something that you can really appreciate playing in the Big East. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget. 
And my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Welcome back to the PNC Big East Game of the Week in the Peters Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. And number 20, Pittsburgh and Louisville, all set to roll into the second half now. 30-27, Louisville by three. As we take a look at our first half stats, brought to you by Geico, Mike. I think turnovers was the story of that first half. Ten turnovers for Pitt turned into 13 points for Louisville. That's how they were able to score most of their points, getting out, turning the ball over, and then turning it into points. Louisville on the year forcing about 17 turnovers. Wanamaker right away. First time he touches the ball, little runner down the lane. He's got double figures. It's a nice shot by Wanamaker, but awfully easy, wasn't it? Right yeah. out of the break. Especially after what we saw in the first 20 minutes. It was shots were tough to come by. Pitt man to man. We got McGee down low against Samuels. And early in the first half, Louisville did a nice job of feeding the ball down to Samuels. One of the keys. Smith inside. Samuels with the right hand, got it. So Samardo Samuels now with an even dozen. Boy, when he gets it, doesn't think, and just plays, goes right to that baby hook. It seems like those are the ones he knocks down. Robinson takes it the distance. He goes coast to coast. He's in double figures with 10. Boy, a different flow so far. A yeah, good play by Robinson. So far, though, what we've seen is not Gibbs for this pit team. It's been the role players. It's been guys like Wanamaker stepping up down the lane. You see Robinson there getting all the way to the rim, breaking the press. Sosa. Samuels again. Boy, when Rick Pitino said feed the post, uh, they heard him. Huh? <laughs> They're feed that the big guy. Get him the ball. <laughs> Boy, he can score. Nice job once again. Go to that left shoulder. But he's got to adjust to that, perhaps favor it a bit. Robinson. Boy, nice ball movement. Good Lord. Yeah. But he with the flush. That one extra pass. Big Pitt scored on every possession so far in the second half. Getting good looks, sharing the basketball, being assertive. Delk inside. Oh, oh that rebound. <laughs> Said, hey, I can rebound from the seat of my pants. I'm not just a three-point shooter. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> oh, they wound up throwing it away. Well, they got the post up they wanted. They went to Delk early on with a post up in the first half. They must like that matchup. I believe it was Wanamaker that was trying to defend him. McGee kept it alive. Robinson came from the backside, and he's fouled over the back. You look at some of the guys scoring for Pitt. Getting it done, at least. A nice block there by McGee. Here's inside to Taylor with a nice finish. Dixon able to find McGee over to Robinson. Breaking that 2-3 zone. Everybody but Gibbs. That's the, the key thing to note here. Team effort by Pitt. We want them to get right back into this game, tied up. And the great thing about that is I don't think Gibbs is worried about it as long as they notch the W. Not huh? at all. He's very nonchalant in a good way. Very calm, collected. He's that toughness leader of the team. Jamie Dixon saying he's our, he's our example. He sets the example for everybody else. Gibbs less than 11 minutes a game last year, but led the Big East in three-point three point shooting percentage. Monsieur Robinson now with 12 points after knocking down two from the strike. And that one's going against McGee. Way out in the front court. I tell you what, Mike, I don't know if you noticed on the previous possession, McGee had jumped out and actually bumped Sosa harder than he did on this possession. There was no foul call, but I I noted it in my head. I thought that's a lot of contact. Eventually they're gonna start to call that. And I'm guessing the referee saw the same thing and thought we can't let that continue to happen. Now he gets called the second time around for contact that wasn't as hard as the first time. And I said way out in the front court, I meant way out front in the back court. Far from uh, the land where he usually patrols down to the paint. Buckles, he's been aggressive here. The freshman turns. 
And it's run down by Robinson, pushed out of bounds by Buckles, and uh, that's going to be four on the big 6'8 freshman. Okay, swap shot back in the game for him. Good job by Robinson just staying in front. They talk about Pitt making you play over the top. That's what I'm talking about. Just staying in front, hands high, contesting shots. It won't make you necessarily take the toughest shots in the world, but when you have to shoot jump shots and you're shooting over someone, those are not easy shots for college players to hit. Pittsburgh. Yeah. In the Big East, you think of the Georgetowns, the Yukons, maybe Rick Pitino in Louisville, but Pittsburgh, uh, the only school in the Big East to win at least 20 and 10 league games over the last eight seasons. That's quite the accomplishment. Won't go down for Samuels. Uh, this time it's uh, chased down by Jermaine Dixon. Fortunate right there for Pitt. Taylor had given Samuels. He tried to come around a little three-quarter, and Samuels was able to hold, a, hold him off and get to the rim. Just missed the bunny. Watch Robinson work the inside of this zone. Pittsburgh gives it up. Cardinals. Rattles in a three, and that's Sosa. We saw him heat up in the second half against St. John's last week. Man, it's been a while since we've talked about Sosa, but you know he's going to get his shots up. Very good outside shooter. Always ready to score, ready to shoot whenever he catches the ball. Sosa, rough first half was sat last Saturday on the Big East Network game of the week. Knocked down three threes in the second half. Dixon, not strong enough, ripped down by Samuels. Sosa with the rock now. That 75-73 game two years ago here. He came off the bench and scored 18. See how far away Samuels got the ball that time. Nice job not trying to score. He's too far away. Swap shot. Yes, that's another three. So suddenly, three-point shooters are starting to heat up for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, Swapshire came in after Buckles picked up his fourth. Nice job knocking that down. I love about Swapshire. Everybody with Louisville tells you he's a gym rat. He's a workaholic. Whenever you describe someone that way, it brings a smile to my face. Good to see players, young players especially, working on their game that hard. Are you trying to tell me you were a gym rat? <laughs> I was. <laughs> Had to be. <laughs> oh. Robinson misfires. Oh, well, you're right. Swapshire used to spend eight, nine hours a day in the gym this past summer. There's Swapshire with the rock and the miss. Up tempo game in the second half. Robinson, he's the man with 14 for Jamie Dixon. Looks like Robinson kind of stepped funny. Came up wincing after that dunk. 14 to 39 to go. Nasir Robinson, a sophomore from Chester, Pennsylvania. Eight in the first half, six already here in the second half. 40-37 to down three. You have dreams for your children. Don't let times like these stand in the way of them. Protect your family with the gift of financial security, backed by the highest possible ratings for financial strength. New York Life, the company you keep. The only thing better than seafood is enjoying it together. And right now, a complete seafood dinner for two is just $29.99 at Red Lobster. You both get a fresh salad and irresistible Cheddar Bay biscuits. Two entrees from a menu of classic favorites and new creations. And your choice of either an appetizer or a dessert to share. Your favorite seafood with your favorite person. Just $29.99 for a limited time at Red Lobster. We've got a ton of stuff we've got to pay for. And a few things we want to pay for. On top of it all, we're still trying to put away some money for the future. With the wish list, we can save up for anything we want. And still have enough to cover the day to day. Plus, the savings engine helps our money grow. And that's something we need and want. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC. A high definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. Get a partner and become America's best twosome. It was a fabulous tournament. Just fantastic. Lush fairways and greens. And, oh yeah, it's Vegas, baby. And it's the ESPN National Golf Challenge. Overcome a few obstacles. Let's challenge some of the country's best golfers. Unbelievable. Top notch. Pretty good. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. 
Now, more than ever, you want to keep your loved ones safe and secure. Give them the gift of financial security from New York Life. We've been protecting families for over 164 years. New York Life, the company you keep. 40-37, Pittsburgh trailing by three. Nasir Robinson, uh, Mike, delivering some blows and uh, getting some blows. <laughs> Receiving it as well. It looks like from his teammate here, as you see Dixon, mm. like where he ran into Dixon, perhaps, is how he got hit as Dixon's arm went up. You don't get to cherry pick when you play defense for Pitt. So you know that wasn't happening, but quick possession. And Robinson goes, hey, get the easiest two of the night real quick. So he faked it all. He faked it all. It was <laughs> all part think? of the play. I don't think so. He's a pretty <laughs> tough player. Well, they don't call him the warrior for anything. 14 points, seven rebounds now. He's six of eight shooting, and uh, he's going to have a sore jaw tomorrow. Dixon even hurt his elbow. <laughs> no sympathy though from Robinson, I think. Sometimes that hurts on the elbow even more though. As uh, Kurek misfires, that's Kurek's first shot. Nice rebound. Knowles warmed up in the first half, knocks down yet another three, so he has 11 now, all on three-point plays. What a kick out though. Great rebound, kick out by Samuels. Mike Louisville started 0 of 7 from three. They're now 6 of 8 ever since. Yeah, and they're doing such a great job feeding the post. They start warming up from outside. Meanwhile, Pitt Olsen tree hasn't hit one, only taken three shots. Pops giving a jump for Dixon. Left-hander hits his first bucket, Mike. He comes in averaging 12 in conference play. Great defense against Samuels. Look at how far he pushed him away from the basket. Walking through the tunnel before the game, ran into a McGee. He's he's a big young man. Here comes Ashton Gibbs down to Dixon. Dixon stops and he's fouled, so he'll get two. So the Louisville Cardinals now press to Knowles. Yeah, off the kick out from Samuels. Nice job finding the open man and Knowles knocking it down. Kyle! What's up, Mom? You went on a 29,000 mile joyride in my brand new BMW? Mom, it's pre-owned. But your father said it was new. Yeah, new as in you didn't have it before. Looks like new, performs like new. And with a warranty for up to six years or 100,000 miles, it's hard to believe it's pre-owned. Wait till your father hears about this. He knows all about it. Take advantage of 0.9% financing now until February 1st. Obsessive. My kids call me the shredder. Because every bill I get goes right in my inbox, not my mailbox. I pay for everything online so I can get these text messages. They're called spending alerts. I feel more in control. Now yeah, they can just come up with chocolate alerts. That'd be great. At City, we know everyone's talking about keeping money safe. And we've got lots of ways to help. Like spending alerts. Because when your money's safe, your mind's at ease. That's why City never sleeps. Days on SNY. Get on the New York Sports Local. Your direct line to the day's top New York sports stories. Oh, what a debacle. Packed with debate. I'm just asking. And opinion. Please, take off. Bringing you to a team of diverse personalities. I have as much confidence in him as I got in road game right now. As passionate about New York sports. Oh, I'm fired up. As you are. Oh, for the love of Mike. Daily News Live, Wheelhouse, and Loudmouths. All part of the New York Sports Local. Weekdays starting at 5 on SNY. Get your New York sports here. Back in Pittsburgh, 43-39, the officials over at the table checking the monitors on this last play. The last shot by Knowles, Mike. This was the kick out from Samuels. See well behind the three-point line. Always good to check, though. Never hurts. It's a good slide down. We've seen some 
some of the Louisville guards really spacing well. We saw Mara in that first half enter the post and then slide to the corner. That time Knowles recognized Samuels was in a tough spot. Came to the corner to bail him out and then get a three of his own. Knowles with four threes in the ball game now. Actually three threes excuse me but uh, the fact is that he's shooting 18 percent in conference play from three point territory. Uh, he's in double figures now with 11 points and guys like Knowles and Jerry Smith they start warming up. You look at these Louisville teams uh, every year in February they're so much better than they were in December January. Yeah, continue to get better and better. I wonder if the bench will get a little bit shorter as well for Rick Pitino. Really uses all of that bench now when they foul as much as they've been fouling. In that last game, actually last couple games, we saw him against St. John's. It's nice to have that deep bench. You can go to so many different people. Yeah, Patino was saying uh, didn't have his team figured out yet because he can't figure out this league as Noel scores again. That's a deuce, so he's got 13 in the game. As Mike said last Saturday against St. John's, he really opened up in the second half and scored 12, but then against Villanova, went back and shot three for 12, one for seven for three. But I guess as experts like you will say, a shooter's got to keep shooting. Got to keep huh? shooting. I don't know anything about it. I didn't get to shoot. But that's what they tell me. Shooters <laughs> shoot their way out of slumps. Nice. Hey, high percentage shot right there, Mike. And again, you work that high post, immediately look down to the short corner. Those big men playing in tandem and finding each other. McGee coming off the big game against UConn. Eight points, nine rebounds, and two blocks. That's his second bucket. Noel says, give me the ball. I'm feeling it. Swapshire gets a little push from behind. Pittsburgh got away with that one. Timeout. And Louisville's going to call a timeout with 1224 to go. I'm not sure. I think it was Gilbert Braun. Got away with a little push there as we go back and uh, take a look at Gary McGee, the 6'10 junior. That's how you attack that zone inside. Big guys working in tandem. Brown going up. Doing his best with the Sear Robinson imitation. High post. Down to McGee with the finish. There's that Syracuse uh, score now in Morgantown trailing West Virginia 39 37 30 50 years ago to the day that Jerry West dropped 30 on Villanova. Well, that's the last time two top 10 teams met in Morgantown Clemson now and by a dozen over NC State in the second. All right let's go coast to coast first of all in the ACC. You see North Carolina 12 straight home wins versus Georgia Tech and in the Big Ten Illinois what a nice job Bruce Weber's done with that team. Michigan State playing great as well though. Yeah Illinois unranked but hanging right up there as far as the standings in the Big Ten and Kentucky they seem to get better and better. Yeah that Gonzaga team. People don't talk about Gonzaga as much as they probably should 14th in the country. Some very nice players Golden doing everything he can for them. You look at the top three coaches as far as winning percentages two active coaches you've got Roy Williams Mark Few at Gonzaga and uh, Jamie Dixon right here at Pittsburgh They're one two three. So I throw Dixon in few in that short list of the best coaches not to be in a final four just yet. The time will come though the way they coach. It's tough. Just think of all the great players over the years that ever tasted the final four. I mean that's something that you tasted. Right? Yep. I mean, it, it was sweet let me tell you. <laughs> Good luck. There's a reach. And Wanamaker is going to pick up the foul. Mike, Coach Patino talked a lot about passing. He thought his team was not passing as well as they should on the perimeter, into the post. He thought they weren't getting the ball to guys in a position to score and where they needed to be. But I think in this game, he's got to be pleased. So far, his team sharing the ball very well. Look at this pass. Wanamaker picked up two, and now he picks up three. Back to back fouls by the uh, junior out of Philadelphia. All right, going to the line. And speaking of Rick Patino. In Pittsburgh, sitting next to Rick Patino, Ralph Willard, the one time head coach here at Pittsburgh, there. The Rick Patino's right, or actually his left, our right. Kirik now, two for three from the free throw line. Nice to have somebody as smart and experienced as Ralph Willard by your side when you're going through a game, I bet. Well, you look at all the great coaches, they usually surround themselves with pretty good people. The hard part is hanging on to them long enough. Eric, one for two. Boy, McGee ripped that one down. Inside 12 minutes now here in Pittsburgh, 46 to 42, Louisville. They've won two. Post. Short corner. Same thing every time. High post, short corner. Eight on 
the shot clock. Dixon doesn't draw iron. Five on the shot clock. Gives it up to McGee down low. There's the whistle. And it's going against Louisville. Inside 12, so we're going to step away now. 46 to 42. Last foul goes against Edgar Sosa of Louisville. We're back after this. In today's markets, how can you get your investments heading in the right direction? At Oppenheimer Funds, our fund manager's perspective on the numbers helps uncover opportunities, no matter which way the markets are moving. Ask your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds. Call your advisor for a prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. Mutual funds are subject to market risk and volatility. Shares may lose or gain value. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Okay, listen up, people. I'm talking to you, fans, coaches, and players. It's been brought to my attention that not all of you have been displaying good sportsmanship. I simply will not tolerate taunting, name-calling, cursing, or any behavior that shows a lack of respect. I want you to act with class and dignity at all times. After all, kids do look up to you. You're role models. Now let's get out there and show them how it's done. Hey, Judith, I'm going to need you to work on Monday. I can't. It's Mungo Day. Mungo Day? It was long ago at the Battle of Glen Kitchen Dairy. There was a bloody fight. Robes were ripped to shreds. Lord Mungo's clan emerged victorious in their tattered garb. <laughs> it was the dawn of men's fashion and the accidental birth of the runway. And how do you celebrate? By going to Las Vegas. Shopping is a big part of the tradition. I'm Gary Apple. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night, big question, can the Jets get it done in San Diego? We're going to break it down from just about every angle here from current members of the Jets and also some all-time Jet greats. Hope to see you tonight. The rumors, the trades, the free agents. Kevin Burkhardt has the latest on the Mets winter workings. Shaping your 2010 Mets roster. Mets Hot Stove, Thursday at 7, only on SNY. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. Our score right now, 46 to 42, Louisville on top by four. We'd like to say hello and thanks to our fans watching in 24 states on our Biggie's Network Game of the Week, along with our viewers watching nationwide on ESPN Full Court and ESPN360.com. What's at stake today? Well, Louisville looking for win number 1600 and the Pitt Panthers. Looking to remain undefeated in Big East play as you take a look at Villanova taking on Georgetown tomorrow at noon. Villanova and Pittsburgh 4 0. Jamie Dixon has two 5 0 starts. This would be his third. They started 5 0 back in 03 and 07. Louisville, of course, is suffering their first loss Monday night. High scoring affair in Freedom Hall against Villanova. The most amazing thing about that 4 0 record for Pitt is three of those games on the road and not oh, against. Yeah. Easy games either. They went to Syracuse, Cincinnati, and Yukon and picked up three straight wins. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I don't think we uh, can talk enough about that here. Whoa! Goes a quick little trigger. There was going to happen. Only four points so far. It gives him seven. Gibbs is just too talented an offensive player to go quiet for an entire 40 minutes. That's his 40th three this year. Led that under 19, a U.S. team to gold in New Zealand this year. All by himself for the stuff. Samuels now with 16 points. What a great two-man game. Sosa and Samuels. And the key there is the clear out. It was just them on that side of the floor. Now, the other three defenders for Pittsburgh have got to have good vision. They've got to see that developing and slide in to help out. And when you think about what you just said, I mean, you talk about, everybody talks about how tough the Big East is, but back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back road wins in this league is, that's a phenomenal feat. Very surprising. In fact, we've seen more road wins at a greater percentage this year than we did last year, about 42% of the games. That's surprising to me. Well, down on the baseline, the drive, and it's going to go against Louisville on the charge, Pittsburgh on the charge. Mike, take us inside the play. What the pick and roll? You see this all the time in NBA games. It's a little two-man pick and roll. The clear out, the great spacing by the Louisville players, but mm. three pit defenders not involved in that play have got to be more aware. They were in good help position, just not quick enough to get over once that pass came through. Well, Samuel's known as the jamming Jamaican, averaging almost a double-double. 
Recently, here's Wanamaker with the steal. Wanamaker fouled. And Dalk says there's no way you're going to take it coast to coast and lay up. You're going to earn the points from the strike. Uh, Reggie Dalk, the senior, picks up his fourth with 9.51 to go. Well, Delk's not shy about picking up fouls. Picks them up in a hurry. He's been in the starting lineup for most of the season, Mike, and uh, Delk was a uh, basically a three-point shooter, outside shooter in the SEC before he transferred to Louisville, and he's a good outside shooter. I thought he would get more shots, actually, in this offense. You know, he'll get the shots when they come to him. I agree with you. A little bit surprising, but you think about what they're trying to do this game in particular get it into Samuels but Sosa so often working with the ball in his hands able to create for himself what you like about Delk is that great size and they play the two three able to really bother people in the press as well use the length to get in passing lanes Wanamaker five of six now from the strike he's got 13 points I haven't seen Jerry Smith in a while for Louisville Sosa, too strong. Wow, look at Kurek. That's exactly what he was doing last Saturday against St. John's. Well, he attacks the glass. Coach Patino talking about it. on the offensive end, he's not as assertive as he needs him to be, but when it comes to rebounding, he's as assertive as it gets. Sosa stripped, it goes out of bounds, and Wanamaker said, hey, it touched his thigh last, but the officials didn't see it that way. Yeah, Rick Patino was talking about Kurek uh, in the preseason. Boy, he. He shocked the heck out of the head coach. He was playing so well. It's a tough shot. It looked like Knowles had his feet underneath him for that three. And as the energy in this arena continues to rise, that's when Pitt's defense really starts to clamp down. Big East players a few years ago voted this building the toughest to play in. Like Stands for reason that Pittsburgh's won almost 93% of their games. Robinson. Wow, a little scoop. How about that shot? Using the right hand. Yeah. Going left, using the right hand. Nice job. The undersized forward finds a way to get it up and pass Samuels. Samuels has to be thinking, are you kidding me? Try that one again. And he comes right back and won. Strong player. Good answer by Samuels. Robinson took it right to him. You see him get the ball, turn and face. I thought they started a little bit late in that possession. Still able to get the basketball and get it to the rim. But here's Samuels. Nice move. You saw McGee there. I think he was favoring him to go right, forcing him to go left. Samuels saying, thank you very much. I'll take it. <laughs> McGee commits the foul. Samuels goes to the line where he's shooting 85% in conference play. 72% on the year. McGee checks out. Dante Taylor, the big freshman, comes in. Samuels, 16 points, 9.7 rebounds over his last nine games he's got 19 points now after the three-point play he's really developed hasn't he we saw him last year as you talked about him being the third option didn't have to be that great offensive threat really worked on his rebounding that's a part of his game he knows he has to get better at you know I was thinking too earlier you talked about Rick Pitino said we got to pass the ball better there's some of that pressure that Louisville has so much success here in years past Great hustle by both teams. Ball still loose, and here comes Preston Knowles. Wow. How about it, Preston Knowles? That's what you like to see. Both coaches happy. Ball getting on the floor. Damon, Jamie Dixon not happy with the outcome, but a scrum. Bodies everywhere. That full court pressure, I expected to see more of that, actually in the ball game, but we haven't seen a lot of that here today. Yeah, Louisville doesn't like to press as much on the road. It press so much more effective when the home crowd can get behind you and turnovers start to compound. I was about to say, you mentioned passing that Rick Pitino said, we have to pass the ball better. What was that? Robinson, I'm not sure. <laughs> he went high off the glass, 18 for him. The point I'm trying to make is you look at Terrence Williams and Earl Clark, those were the two Top assist guys on this team last year. Well, they lost two of their best passers. 
Wide open. That's what happens. Knowles with a three. He's got 18. He's in rhythm. He's playing with so much confidence right now. We saw him shoot the ball well in the first half. And then after the steal and the dunk, he just knew that three was going to fall. Knowles has missed just two shots. Ah, oh, another outside shot rattles in for Ashton Gibbs. How about that? That it's, might be the quickest release in, in, the, in the conference for sure, perhaps in the country. Ashton Gibbs is not a high riser on that jump shot, but he gets it off so quick, you can't bother him. Well, Gibbs, big time scorer in high school. As we take a look at Knowles warming up. A great ball rotation. There's the passing Rick Patino likes to see. And Knowles, who's in a rhythm, is going to knock it down. And here's the answer from Gibbs as he just picks it up. Nice little rhythm bounce and buries it. Hit that huge three in transition in the second half against UConn, which snapped and grabbed some of that momentum back to uh, Pittsburgh on Monday night in the win against the Huskies. Now keep in mind, he was a big time scorer in high school at Seton Hall Prep. He, he broke a scoring record that stood for 34 years. You know, Mike, I read a nice article about Gibbs, and it sort of posed the question Gibbs has been thrown around. Is he the most improved player this year? Or was he this good last year? He just couldn't get the minutes <laughs> to show how good he was. And probably a little bit of both. He certainly worked on his game. Jamie Dixon getting to coach him in USA basketball. They won the gold medal. And that was a big part of his progress. I think it helped his confidence, and he stepped in, filling that void for all the players they lost from last year's squad. Well, Gibbs led the Big East in three-point shooting percentage last year, and Knowles was number two. Both these guys starting to warm up down here in the second half. And you mentioned that gold medal that Jamie Dixon won. That was the first for Uncle Sam since 1991. But the zone from Pitt. Uh, work. Pick a pocket. Dixon. Robinson has 20. Tied at 56. Rick Pitino says, hey, let's calm down, guys. Final time out. Catch our breath. Now, does Rick Pitino call the T.O. because of big mo momentum, or did he see something out there that... I think both. First off, pit plate zone. They went 2-3, which they don't do very often. Nice steal. So you want to be prepared for how you want to attack the zone. But beyond that, you've got to get this crowd out of it right now. This place is getting loud, getting uncomfortable for the visiting team. Well, Mike, you mentioned the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back road games. Now the, the Zoo seeing their team for the first time in 19 days. And they've come back to tie it up at 56 apiece. One thing that stood out in that UConn game to me, watching Pittsburgh, they'd have the lead, they'd blow it. They'd have the lead, they'd blow it, but they kept fighting. They never, never really panicked in that game. Yeah, that toughness. Jamie Dixon recruits players with that toughness right in their makeup and that's what allows him to be good on the road I think. Swapshire gives it to the the big man inside and Samuels now with 21. Oh, makes no difference who's playing the zone you beat it the same way. Got to get that ball in the high post get it down to Samuels nice job posting up by Samardo and able to go right up with it. More two three from Louisville. Robinson having a great game inside. Very active. There he is again. Deep in the corner. Doesn't go. Look who's there. Number 35. Nasir Robinson. Right place, right time. But who else? How active has Nasir Robinson been in this game? What a great job he's done. Swapshire answers. Robinson, 10 of 12 from the field, 22 points. It's a career high. What a game. Brown, he's been quiet offensively here. Dixon takes it in. Well, he took it in the land of the bigs. It's tough to drive into the teeth of a zone. It really is. It's so much easier to beat a zone with passing. Inside five minutes now. Cardinals on the road with a two point lead. They've won more road games in the Big East than anyone oh, what in the last move. four years. Sosa. Goodness. Edgar Sosa, that was incredible. Never really even got a ball screen. He wanted to have a two man game, and Sosa just turned the corner. He went through about four pit defenders. 
Now the bucket gives Sosa for seven in the uh, ball game now. How about this Mike Gleason. Dante Taylor kind of picks his own player. He was so ready to hedge <laughs> and the athleticism to be able to finish. Yeah I thought he was going to take it up with the left hand at first. You know Split Sosa's deep. a guy from a time to time will force a shot up. I don't think he's done that too much though in this game. He's kind of let it let it come to him a bit. They've worked through the post gotten Samaro Samuels the ball as much as they can and and Sosa up until that shot hadn't really been forcing much which is a good thing. Yeah. He's had some big games big moments in his career at Louisville. Of course you got the 31 point game. You got the game winning against Texas A&M. You got the game winning three against Kentucky. Now with an acrobatic move uh, to give his team the four point lead. There's Robinson now 10 of 12 as Mike mentioned nine rebounds so a rebound shy of a double double. Sosa with the seven we mentioned three for eight. He was four for 11 with 17 points against Villanova and that lost Monday night. Boy Robinson he wants that rock doesn't he Mike. To say this is my day. Look at the hustle. Boy these two teams are scrapping. <laughs> my elbows hurt just watching these guys fall to the floor. <laughs> we can feel it. We can hear it. All season long champion apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big East Conference. Today let's take a look back at uh, one of the most memorable moments in college basketball history. Pittsburgh's Jerome Lane and most of us remember this Mike. By Miller goes ahead. Lane's on the other wing. Oh! 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 Yeah! Send it in Jerome! <laughs> Bill Raftery with uh, with that call send it in Jerome. What a call. It was tiny gallon for Texas broke a backboard this year. Mm -hmm. It can still be done. Boy great moment but uh, for the people that had to catch a flight from that game. Must have took it a 15 20 25 minutes to put the new backboard <laughs> up there. Huh? It's how you play champion. And he was playing tough that day. Jerome Lane, uh, one of the five McDonald's All-Americans to play at this school. Charles Smith, another one, uh, the all-time leading scorer, second all-time leading rebounder. Biggest lead of the game. Biggest lead of the game. Now the Panthers. What do you do with that rim? <laughs> you hit it, took it home. Big second half, a lot of uh, defense in that first half. And Boy some guys really stepped to the plate uh, here in the second half. How about Samuels and Robinson. You know we talked about Samuels doing a great job. Preston Knowles though stepping up 18 points in the Sierra Robinson having a career night. Samuels with the 11 of his 21 in the second half and uh, Robinson with at eight in the first half. He's got 22 for the game. Ten ties five lead changes in the game and Pittsburgh's Wanamaker takes it into the teeth of the defense and draws the foul. Inside four minutes. All right, Mike. Who wants it more, Louisville or Pittsburgh? Take a look at this, huh? So often, what it comes down to. Great effort by both sides, and this one, Knowles, coming up with the dunk. Performance now is all about logic. That some cars cost as much as fifteen hundred dollars to maintain is one thing. That others cost even more is quite another. That a BMW costs you nothing to maintain defies all logic whatsoever. And in turn, makes it the most logical choice of all. Performance now is the 3 Series. Lease a BMW 3 Series for $379 a month now through March 1st. Okay, Pixels. IOTV brings people every HD game of the Knicks. Rangers, Nets, Islanders, Devils, Mets, Yankees, Giants, and Jets. So, can we all agree not to play favorites? I all suppose. Right, sure. I guess so. Great. Let's shake on it. All right, let's do it. Yes! <laughs> no one delivers more New York sports in HD. IOTV brings you an extraordinary HD experience free. I just found out about the most amazing travel destination on Market Showcase. What's Market Showcase? 
It's three television channels full of information and offers on a variety of products and services. Sounds great. Where can I find it? It's easy. Just turn to channels 601, 602, or 603, and you're there. You can find out about interesting places to visit, new places to eat, and even enter to win great prizes. Wow. I can't wait to check it out. Market Showcase. Explore it today. Online or call now. Are we tough enough? We play with passion. The team that goes out and plays harder and just has the will to defend every possession. We don't lose at home. Here we go. To order your tickets, call 516 Hop Ticks. It's time for you to roar with us. Nasir Robinson, uh, the young man uh, nicknamed the Warrior, he's been that in the second half, Mike. At eight points in the first half, but in the second half, he's really exploded to the basket. What a job he's done. Some acrobatic, creative ways to score, but what I like about it is against this zone, you need a guy like Robinson to collect that pass inside, to turn and make the nice pass or the nice shot for Louisville. Preston Knowles, what a job he's done, knocking down some outside shots. As always, brings that energy off the bench and scoring as well. Here out of the scrum, able to get in transition with the dunk, fires him up, fire himself up as well. And there's the swing to the corner. He just knew he was going to knock this down after the dunk. Well, against Villanova, Knowles was 3 of 12, and right now he's 7 of 9, and Robinson 10 of 13, the rest of the team 10 of 26. As the whistle down on the baseline goes against Louisville. That's doubt. He's done. He knows 18 points, two assists. Another timeout here on the floor, 3.58 to go. It's going to be a very dramatic 3.58 when we come back. With the new Geico Glove Box app, you can get help with a flat tire. Find a nearby tow truck or gas station. Call emergency services. Collect accident information. Or just watch some fun videos. It's so easy, a caveman can do it. Unbelievable. Where's my coat? It was suede with the friend. Download the Glove Box app free at geico.com. Oh, yeah. It's Vegas, baby. And it's the ESPN National Golf Challenge. 54 holes of challenging golf in the heart of the Las Vegas desert. I love this resort. I, you know, I love coming out to Paiute each year. The event's unbelievable. The staff, you know, treats you like royalty here. That's all you can ask for. We had a great time. About as good as it gets. The action is nonstop as you and your partner challenge golfers from all around the country to become America's best twosome. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. More exciting Big East Hoops action comes your way Saturday, January 23rd, as Rutgers takes on Georgetown. The Scarlet Knights will rely on their inside-outside combination of Hamidi Njai and Mike Rosario to lead them to victory. But standing in their way is Hoya's big man and Big East Player of the Year candidate, Greg Monroe. It's the Big East Game of the Week as Rutgers takes on Georgetown Saturday, January 23rd at noon Eastern, 11 Central, only on the Big East Network. January 29th and 30th. It's our opportunity to go the distance. It's about dedication. It's about determination. It's about pride. It's about proving we're the best in New York. It's about bragging rights. It's about getting it done. It's about playing hard. It's about being the team to beat. To prove we for real. Today's Big East Network game has been brought to you by PNC, leading the way. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Interstate batteries, outrageously dependable. And by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest.
Back in Pittsburgh, inside four minutes now, 62 to 58. Along with the captain of that Wisconsin Final Four team, Mike Kelly. I'm Mike Lee. You look at bench points, Louisville, 25 to 6 over Pittsburgh. What do we expect on the last 358? I go back to basics right now. I so say you got to take care of the basketball and knock down your free throws. Whichever team does that better these last few minutes, I think we'll get the W. But 358 is a lot of time, so there's a lot of basketball to be played in this game. It certainly is. And what we've seen out of Pitt, though, is a nice job in a half court sets. But again, I go back to taking care of the basketball. Both sides, you know, Louisville's going to turn up the pressure. Pitt now in the bonus. Seven fouls on Louisville in the second half. Wanamaker, a 70% shooter. Very successful at the stripe so far here today. He's got 14 in the ball game. Some guys tangled up on a free throw. You try and Robinson. Getting friendly. <laughs> yeah, see who wants it more. The young sophomore, the warrior. Well, Wanamaker, more like a 90% shooter, the way he's stroking it from the line. Down two, 62 60. Guess the reason I mentioned that bench, Mike, you'd mentioned uh, the depth that Rick Pitino has. And 25 6 bench points 13 times Louisville's bench has outscored the opposition is is that going to play into effect or is it just the, the marquee players now take over. Well I think you always got to go back to your to your big name players you got to go back to a guy like Samuels and let Sosa work with the basketball when you're in a situation like this and Pitt's got to get the ball in Gibbs hands no doubt Robinson's having the, having a big game but I don't think you can have any more confidence in a player than you have in a guy like Ashton Gibbs the way he plays. In all fairness, I guess Noel's considered a bench player coming off, and uh, he's got 18, so that's 18 of the 25 Louisville. for Louisville. Cardinals 12 and three, three or 12 and five, three and one in Big East play. Pittsburgh 14 and two, four and zero. Oh. Off the inbound, won't go. Is that battle on the boards? Nice job, Preston uh, Noel's. Sosa. Well, nobody's pulling it down, but they're keeping it alive. It's a struggle down there, Mike. Some great activity, though. <laughs> Players on both sides just getting after the basketball. Preston Knowles, maybe the shortest player on the court right now, got up and tipped that one back. Just an incredible effort. Now for Pitt, you look at them working the half court on offense. They had 10 turnovers in the first half, only two so far in the second half until there. Another steal. Sosa loses control. Why well, Pittsburgh fans, they well, want right. it. right. And, and they, they should want it because that was a bailout. Sosa was clearly going to travel here. See what comes first, the travel or the oh, foul. Yeah. He lost control of that basketball. They charge Gibbs with the foul. And the Sosa's going to the line in the bonus. Patino watching his team shoot 87% from the stripe Monday night in a loss right now up by 3 63 60 in the bonus Edgar Sosa with a second knocks them both down you know, before I had jinxed Pitt they had only two turnovers. They turned it over in the last possession, turned into two points for Louisville. So important for them to take care of this basketball, work it inside, and Monsieur Robinson when they can. Then you find Gibbs on the perimeter, a little inside out. There's Gibbs. Second biggest jump in America from four points to 17.6 this year. He's got 10 points. Running out of time here. Oh, look at that extra pass, but it goes out of bounds. Dixon says that Louisville touched it. The officials didn't see it that way. Oh, the ball came down. You watch Wanamaker come down. He was so adamant that it got tipped. Mm. Oh, it didn't. It just went right through. Good idea. Good vision to see him. Just couldn't get it to him. Extending that man to man pressure now. The defense by Gibbs. The toughness they're built on, but Samuel's a little bit tougher that time. What, what, what a game he's had. 20, 
Hard to stop that. We saw McGee come over and Samuel's just able to shoot right over. There's the whistle and the foul going against Samuels. So Samuels with 23 points uh, picks up the foul and he's had a big, big second half. Well, he works nice with his back to the basket. We talked about how he likes to go to his left shoulder as most right-handed players do, but he can go left. You see there, there's the spin move to get back to his left shoulder. Nice job by Sosa finding him down low. His teammates feeding him the ball. Rick Pitino talking about passing, needed to improve in the passing game, and I think they've shown that so far. That was Samuel's third foul with 151 to go. Robinson now with 23. Nasir. In Arabic, it means success in victory. Well, he came to the right place playing for Jamie Dixon. Robinson with a second career double double now, 23 points, 10 rebounds. Missed the second. Oh, there's some boxing out going on. A nice effort just to tip it away, give his team a chance to get the offensive rebound. Boy, both both these two teams are really going at it. You know, after the game, you hear coaches say they wanted it more. Well, both these two teams are hungry. They want it. You know, Dixon just got his arms tangled up with Sosa, who's trying to come off the screen. It's tough to slow down a guy like Edgar Sosa when he's looking, hunting for his shot. So remember now, in the bonus, Sosa just knocked down two in the one-on-one. -on -one. Back on the line with nine points. You know, with both teams in the bonus, this is why I go back to down the stretch, free throws and turnovers. That'll decide so many close games. And he missed the front end. I hit the backboard first. Wow. Almost a dangerous move, splitting the defense there in the zone. Inside. Robinson again. seconds to go. Samuels backs his man in with 13 on the shot clock. Huge shot. How strong is he? He's strong. What a nice job just going right with it. Continuing to work down in the post. Nothing fancy. Workmanlike but able to be productive. Gibbs misses the shot. Swapshire was held. There's the whistle finally. And, and the foul is going to go against Robinson. Back to Samuels and the way he's just been able to work. I think Pitt's done a nice job of forcing him away from the low block. He hasn't caught the ball very low that much this game, but he'll put it on the floor. Come on over, McGee. I'm not so sure if they were supposed to run a trap or if he just tried to come over and help out, but Samuel splits it and goes right up for an easy two. You know, earlier we talked about Louisville always better in February than they are in December and January. One thing that really stands out, Mike, is you know basketball is a game of runs, but this Louisville team has been a constant here today. That's right, and usually their big runs come at home, and they get the crowd behind them, and we've seen those on the road. Very consistent effort. They've been good in the half-court offense. 35 seconds behind the back to Robinson. The scoop doesn't go, but he's fouled. So Robinson goes back to the line with 25. Reggie Dell picks up the foul. Robinson is going to be it for him, I believe. When you talk about turnovers and free throws, Mike, coming into the game today, Robinson was 9 of 30 from the free throw line. How about the pass, though? Down low oh. behind the back, <laughs> right in traffic. Going back to LeVance Fields, Carl Krauser, some of the great point guards. Pin his head over the years. Those guys known for a little French pastry. So Reginald Dalk. Dalk following out with uh, two points. You know, before the game, uh, we went back and talked with uh, Jamie Dixon. I like what you brought up. Before the season, Jamie Dixon made it uh, clear to his staff uh, they weren't going to lower their expectations just because everybody else had. I thought that was interesting. And you can tell it's shown. They've held these players accountable and as he said they've got good players just because they were playing behind great ones last year didn't get an opportunity so Robinson on the season see that 30 percent Jerry Smith back in the game for Louisville he only played five minutes so far in the second half
Second half, Syracuse on the road, on top by seven now over West Virginia. Robinson with 26. Just 33 seconds to go in the ball game, and down four. You got to keep the ball of the big guy's hands. Almost have to front them at this point, don't you? Well, I think it starts with the pressure on the perimeter. See them trying to get a trap here and get a quick turnover if they can. And there's the fall by uh, Dixon coming over with 28 seconds, so five seconds off the clock. And Louisville will be going back to the line again. You now you think about NCAA tournament resumes, it's still the middle of January, but this would easily be the best win for Louisville if they can get it on the road against a strong team like Pitt. Well, Dixon picks up his fourth, putting Sosa back on the line. Sosa missed the front end last time. Gets two shots this time, of course, and missed the front end again. Pittsburgh, Villanova undefeated in conference play. Villanova will take on Georgetown at noon tomorrow. Louisville Cardinals uh, hit the road. They go to Seton Hall, and Sosa missed both that time. I'd like to find Gibbs here if you can. 20 seconds to go. Dixon with the runner, rejected by Samuels. Boy, great block by Samuels, but I'm sure Coach Patina would tell you he'd love to see him just corral that ball. He had plenty of time, great recognition, great vision to come on over and help. Easy to say in hindsight, he's just trying to get to the basketball, but if he can keep that in play, what a game changer this is. Nice erase, though, by Samardo Samuels. All right, Mike, 17.8. You're down four. I don't want to say plenty of time, but you, you get a bucket, maybe a conventional three-point play the old-fashioned way inside, or do you start launching threes now? No, I don't think you need to be obsessed with a three-point shot. I think you got to get a quick bucket, but certainly it's a two-possession game no matter what type of shot you hit. So you want to take the quickest you can, and if some presents itself out of this baseline, out of bounds that they're going to have, you got to take it inside and then foul again, try to extend this game. Well, Gilbert Brown... Well, granted, this is only his sixth game back since coming off of the uh, academic suspension, but he came in shooting 58%, 67% from three. Uh, granted, he's only taken eight shots, six of eight. He hasn't really taken a lot of shots, not a lot of opportunity, but not a lot of touches here today either. This year, Robinson doing such a good yeah. job. Similar position, taking advantage of his opportunities. And you talk about missing Gilbert Brown for academic issues. And Missing Jermaine Dixon as well for injury. Those players, not only were they out, they couldn't practice. Sometimes you, you can't have a guy, don't even get to practice with him. See Pittsburgh there, out of timeouts. Louisville has one left with 17.8. Pittsburgh has the ball down four. Look at this look. Wanamaker, deep in the corner. It's a three. Down one. What a play. What a play out of the timeout. Well, Jamie Dixon hasn't won almost 79% of his, his games for nothing. Here comes the Cardinals. Take the shot if you can get it. And Sosa's hammered by Gilbert Brown. It almost looked like Sosa held up. I don't know if he was unsure if he wanted to take a shot. Here's that great inbounds play, though. What a set play, knowing that everybody would be watching Gibbs. Jamie Dixon sets up a play for Wanamaker. He just slides down to the corner, flattens out. Sosa missed his last three goes to one. Two for five. Cardinals seven of 13, just 54% from the stripe. But Sosa, the senior, hits a big one. Puts him in double, double figures with 10. 11.7. If he hits this one, it's a three point game. Two point game. Sosa came over. Gibbs says he hammered me. Jamie Dixon's off the bench. Wow. I'm not sure. But Lou will take a timeout. They will. No foul call. Well, it looked to me like it was a foul. We'll see if there's contact on the arm. There definitely oh, was definitely. not contact on the basketball. You can see the trajectory of the shot, though, as he goes up. It was way off to the left, hit his elbow as the ball left his hand. Well, I think what the referees must have seen was him get the, the foul. Yep. You see it, he gets him right on the arm. 
Referee's clearly thinking that it was a blocked shot because they're giving this ball to Pitt on the baseline. Well, Jamie Dixon has 3.7 seconds to work with, down two to Louisville. Well, plenty of time here. Cardinals. Got to get to the glass. Always important. Everybody crash the glass if you're pit right now when the shot goes up. Cardinals, the only team in the Big East to win twice inside this building. Trying to inbound it. Here we go. There's a push. They're going to the line. With 1.9 seconds to go. Wanamaker, who's been good at the line today. See here, Wanamaker didn't get the ball in a great position to score, just doing what yeah. he can. Yep. Great point. Selling the foul. As he gets tripped. Nine of ten from the stripe. Ten of eleven from the stripe. 69-68. Well, this will make your blood Rick, kind of flow here, Rick, huh? Yep, Rick Pitino used his last time out before that inbounds play, so now he's out. Just under two seconds left if this shot goes in for Louisville to try to get a shot off. Just about everybody standing inside this building. Wanamaker, Jr. from Philadelphia. Used to go to the playgrounds in Philadelphia and just dream of playing big time college basketball. Now he, he's at the line, down one with 1.9 seconds to go. Shut up, Rick! He hits it. I thought he was going to short harm it, Mike. Big shots from a big time player. Want to make her ice in his veins all day. Here we go, 1.9. Sosa puts it up. Oh, and for overtime. Hits the front of the rim. How about that shot? You just can't count out Pitt. Here's a look at the last shot attempt by Sosa. Gets it off in plenty of time. Thought he might have had it, but how about this pit team? You get another look at Sosa shot. Sosa shot rather. It was 68 to 64. I thought they didn't have a chance, but we are headed for overtime. When we come back, we're going to find out if the Pitt Panthers can extend that home winning streak to 31 and move to 5-0 in the Big East this year. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. We're back in Pittsburgh, and the zoo is jacked up, Mike Kelly. When I just said it was 68-64. I didn't think they had a shot, but like you said, you can't count them out. You can't count them out. That great inbound play. I wonder how Jamie Dixon does it. Does it? It's great coaching decisions like that. Finding Wanamaker in the corner for three. That gave him a chance. First overtime game for the Louisville Cardinals. Pittsburgh beat Duquesne in double overtime earlier this year. But second overtime game for them. Mid Panthers, one of the big stories early season. After losing four starters, here they are at 14 and 2, looking for their 5 0 start in the Big East Conference. We open the OT with Samuels. 
25 in the scoring column. And as big of a win as this would be for Pitt, if they can come back, quality home win, it would be a devastating loss for this Louisville team that had the game in hand. Still looking for that signature win. Thought they had it, a road victory over top 20 team. Sosa loses the handle. Nine turnovers. So in regulation, just eight turnovers for the Louisville Cardinals here today on the road. They want to get Gibbs. Trying to free him up on the baseline. Robinson looking for the open man. Spin, Dixon. McGee. Brand new 35. Gibbs. Yes, it's a clue. They were going to get Ashton Gibbs the ball. They didn't get it to him off the set play. Nice job keeping it alive with the offensive rebound and finding him for a, a deep three. Knowles had the lane and kind of lost the handle, Mike. He had a good jump down the lane. And Rick Pitino jumping off the bench right now. He's upset as the call goes against the cards. Another look here. And definitely the last touch by Samuels. Yeah. Some physical play down low. I think Rick Pitino wanted it to be called off a of Pittsburgh player's head, but I didn't see it. Wanamaker. Samuels just grabs him. Oh. <laughs> got, got all ball, apparently. Get the boxing gloves out right now. This turned into a fight. All right. Let's Looks take like another look at it. Wanamaker goes down. Samuels tries to reach down. <laughs> Is the hand well, part of the ball? He got some ball. He got some ball. <laughs> Possession arrow pointing uh, back over here to Pittsburgh. Retains possession. Boy, almost another pick by Swapshire that time. Gibbs will back it out. They continue to watch Nasir Robinson work inside against this zone. We talked about it all game. It's been so crucial. His ability to catch and receive that ball and make a play. Dixon. A step back for the South Paul. He's taking some tough shots today. High degree of difficulty, perhaps none bigger though than that one. Swapshire, nope, it's not going to go. Could tell as soon as it left his hand, he didn't feel it. Everything going right the way for Pittsburgh right now. But a bounce back the way they did in this ball game, I guess that defines the toughness that you're sure talking does. about. I wonder how a team can go on the road and get three straight road victories in tough venues. This is how they do it, that toughness. Want to make another step back. I like to see him get it inside to Samuels. Sosa, that's a three. Three by Sosa doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Closing the gap. Sosa now with 13 in the ball game. Just two of seven from three-point territory, so says. Pitt really getting pushed away from the basket. Wanamaker, high, off the window. There's a stick back by McGee. <laughs> Cardinals down four. Half court said you got to get in Sosa's hand. Let him work with Samuels. Here it is on that side. Not many whistles in this overtime. Already down to a minute 36 to go. There's a, a strip. Big, big time steal by Pittsburgh. Boy, Pitt just continues to come after you defensively. Stay in front. Don't give you anything easy. Everything's contested. Hands going down when you drive into the lane, poking the ball away. Wanamaker, Swapshire, and the whistle of the foul will go against Pittsburgh this time. It's a big foul, going to send Swapshire to the line. Wanamaker. 83% free throw shooter is Swapshire. Chance to put some points on the board. No more time coming off the clock. So Wanamaker picks up his fourth now with a minute six to go in the overtime. 
So important to keep these games, especially in overtime, to a one possession game. You get to four or five, as it was for a second there. You start to yeah. feel a little bit of panic set in. Swaps are an 84% shooter. He's two for three. Three for four now. Eight points in the ball game. Robinson heads for the bench. He's got 26. Bring in the athletic Brown. Let him try and come after some rebounds. Uh, Mick Brown and Sam Brown is about as athletic as Stanley Robinson. The Swapshire calmly knocks in both. Dixon. Still no whistle. Down to a minute. Well, it's nice to have a guy like Ashton Gibbs. You see Edgar Sosa paying close attention to him. Someone with that experience, the toughness, the ability to score off the dribble. Here he is with the ball. He's a guy you want to be able to create. The Wanamaker almost had a five-second call against him. Dixon, there's a hop, skip, and a jump, and a big, big, big bucket. Global's got to be quick now. Down four. Got to find a way to score. Doesn't have to be a three, but you got to move fast. That's a three. Oh, you see the fans <laughs> in the building? It just took the air out of the blow. I tell you what. What a great game. Players on both sides making big shots. This is not a game that's going to be won by people missing shots and failing to take advantage of opportunities. We've seen guys on both sides knock it down when they've had to. Free throws, three-point shots. Here's a look at the last couple buckets first with Dixon inside. Like I said, he doesn't make life easy for himself. He goes right in there with the big guys against the tough mobile defense. And the answer back by Preston Knowles, the deep three, nothing but net. Five of seven is Preston Knowles from beyond the arc. Yeah, he's feeling it five of seven. So if anything, he's going to snap out of his funk. Look at that, 72-71 Syracuse. Goes into West Virginia. Picks up a victory against Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers. Well, Syracuse is a team. Now, you, you call that Pittsburgh win at Syracuse in the Dome. And that's five straight times now that Pittsburgh's beaten Syracuse. That's amazing. It, it is amazing. I thought in that game there was a Syracuse team that, first of all, they have lost two very good guards in Diebendorf and Johnny Flynn. And Brandon Trish, the freshman, is doing a nice job for him. But they hadn't been tested up until that point. They had, by and large, just sort of skated through the schedule and beat teams by double digits. I don't think they had been down by more than four or five points to that point. And they kind of panicked a bit. Pittsburgh took advantage. And Jim Beheim told his team that, too. He said, hey, guys, we haven't played anybody yet until we get in the Big East. They had a plus 21 scoring margin. That drops down to plus 7 in conference play. Here we go. Try to get a steal or foul quick. you got to extend this game. 20 seconds. Gibbs almost loses it. That's the guy you want to have the ball. There's a trap over there in front of Dixon. Timeout. See the trouble was going to be a timeout. Knowles didn't want to foul him. He knows how good a shooter Gibbs is. Had the 40 something, what is it, 45 free throw streak and yeah. free throws made. You don't want to foul Ashton Gibbs. It's an automatic two. They're going for the steal. Hard to believe there wasn't a foul in there. Eventually, Jamie Dixon gets the timeout. Yeah, you're right. 46 straight on the line. You just joined us. We're in overtime here. Pittsburgh battled back, and they battled back big time to force the overtime as Ashton Gibbs. Hit some big shots, as did Dixon, and Nasir Robinson really, really had a big game, and Wanamaker, McGee, everybody playing well. Pitt having a nice overtime period so far. It started with that three from Gibbs. It was a great comeback. They really seized control, got this crowd into it in overtime. You talk about Knowles, they're hitting five of seven. He came in shooting 18% in conference play from long range. Top of the conference, Villanova, Pittsburgh, both 4-0. Villanova will take on Georgetown tomorrow at noon. Louisville at three and one. West Virginia drops to four and two after losing to Syracuse in Morgantown today. Louisville heads for Seton Hall next. Pittsburgh will have Georgetown here on the 20th. Pittsburgh back home for the first time in 19 days. 16 seconds to go. And look. Yeah, rugby, rugby, yeah, exactly. Let me throw the ball down between their legs. Fight for it. The junior high dance, no touching out there, guys. <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> well, we 
started the game we're wiping the chalk off the floor and <laughs> now we're getting some uh, water or perspiration off the floor with 16 seconds. See Preston Oles trying to get in between the pit players. You have to give room for the defense. We're stretching out the drama here in Pittsburgh. Brown. Oh, they're going to call the foul on Sosa. Well, that's better than fouling Gibbs. He fouled Trevon Woodall. Gibbs almost automatic at the line. Well, they're going to get Knowles on Gibbs. Oh. Sosa was guarding Woodall. Looked like they pointed at Sosa. Now you talked about the 46 straight free throws. Gibbs hit. He's hitting 93% now on the year. Like death and taxes, huh? Yes, Gives right. it the line. Automatic. You just have a player like that. Just close games you can go to, especially a guard, can free himself from the basketball. Woodall checks back out as they go big again. McGee comes in. Gibbs hits both. He's got 15. His team leads by three. Samuels. Deep corner shot. Air ball. Wanamaker. Dixon. And that's going to be the dagger right there. The Louisville Cardinals, the only team in Big East to win twice inside this building. They thought they had number three, the Jamie Dixon squad. The toughness they pull it out. You're right, Mike. It goes back to the toughness. What a great comeback for this pit team. Unbelievable start to Big East play that they've had. Thought they were dead to rights. Down for the big three by Wanamaker in the corner. That last possession for Louisville. Unable to get, I think, the three that they really wanted. Surprised they went away from Sosa. See Swapshire there just falling away. A tough spot for him to try to catch that shot. And then the leak out here, Dixon able to finish and put it away. 82-77. So once again, the Pitt Panthers remain undefeated in Big East play. They go to 5-0 for the third time under Jamie Dixon. All right, Mike, you talk about you know, this team. They're getting a lot of things written about them. And uh, Jamie Dixon says, hey, we're not going to get overconfident because I reminded them we're still the same team that uh, everybody picked ninth. You know, they go to work every day. They do the simple things. They play the great defense. They execute in half court. And I say simple. It sounds simple to do, but they do it almost as good as anybody in the country. Jamie Dixon working with the players that he has left and able to just plug them in and continue to play their game. Well, the Pitt Panthers go to 5-0. Uh, they get uh, 26 points from Nasir Robinson, 20 from Brad Wanamaker, and 15 from Ashton uh, Gibbs. Once again, the final score here from the Peterson Event Center, Louisville goes down in overtime to the Pitt Panthers 82-77. A reminder to catch more exciting action with Big East Network Game of the Week next Saturday as Rutgers takes on Georgetown. For more information on the Big East Network, log on to ESPNplus.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. For Mike Kelly and the entire Big East crew, Mike Leeson saying so long from Pittsburgh.